as the monster calls this his house, Dover International Speedway, side of the FedEx 400 benefiting autism speeds. They're beginning to roll out for 400 miles of racing. Here's the Geico starting grid for today's race. Brad Keselowski, fifth career pole, and Kyle Busch going for the weekend triple, a two-time Dover winner. Row two, Joey Logano, best start in 11 Dover appearances. Jimmy Johnson's won eight races here. Kyle Larson, first start at Dover, second in Nationwide here last September. Jeff Gordon, four victories here. Denny Hamlin, uh, fourth twice in 16 races, and Kevin Harvick, the runner-up in 2012. Brian Vickers was fifth here in 11. Clint Boyer, top 10, his last six Dover starts. A.J. Allmendinger has two seventh-place finishes here. Greg Biffle, two wins. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 2001 fall winner, and Ryan Newman, a three-time Dover victor. And it's Paul Menard with one top 10 finish at Dover, and Martin Truex Jr., who got his first career win here. Casey Kane and rookie Brett Moffitt in row number nine, rounding out the top 20, Jamie McMurray, a runner-up in 06, and Tony Stewart, the defending winner of this race. He's been to victory lane here three times. Hey, uh, Mr. Subway, uh, Carl Edwards, it's uh, DW, got a copy? I've got you, D.W. How you doing? Doing well, my friend. Hey, Carl, you were awesome at Bristol, a high bank half mile racetrack. What's your chance today, buddy? How's your car for today? I don't know. I didn't think we were very good at Bristol. Like you said, we won that one, and this is basically a big Bristol, so hopefully the track slicks up. The subway four works well. I mean, yesterday the 48 was really fast, so we weren't in that league, but the place changes a lot, so we got high hopes. All right, my friend, have a great day. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Mr. Concrete there, Carl. Concrete Carl. Have good luck, buddy. All right, thanks a lot. Hopefully somebody got ham and a sandwich. He's still whining. I saw a ham sandwich down there. That's today's Subway Fresh Take. Now let's send it down to Chad Knauss and get today's Cobalt Tools of the Race. This week in Dover, the cobalt tools of the race quite simply can be just your brain. The way you organize that last pit stop. If it's a green flag pit stop, do you want to be the first guy to come down pit road and run the risk of maybe a caution flag coming out and capturing you a lap down? Or do you want to wait till the end of the pit cycle so you know you're safe and clean and not going to go a lap down? Let's say if it's a caution flag pit stop, are you going to take two tires to try to gamble and be the first guy off the pit road? Or are you going to make the safe play and take four tires? That's going to be the key right there. That last final pit stop is definitely going to be a player who wins this race. Let's get late breaking stories from Pit Road, beginning with Chris Tavoda. Mike, this track fits Joey Logano, and his pit stall is right in front of, of all things, Victory Lane. Don't be surprised if Joey Logano is back there when the day ends. Matt Yoakum? Chris, to many predict your winner could come from row four, the four car of Kevin Harvick. Stout all weekend, whether it's on the bottom or up high, his setup is near perfect. And as that groove widens out, as more rubber's laid down, look for that four car to be toward the front. Steve Burns? Well, Matt Denny Hamlin has a great starting spot. He goes off seventh, but he's never won here in 16 starts. His team said their goal was to give him confidence in that race car. At the end of practice yesterday, he said, I'm very close to being among the best. Jeff Hammond. Steve, I'm on top of the Dover Hotel and Casino. And right now, folks, down below, the competitors are already gambling. One group's putting a bet down that they can take a fast car and a fast pit crew and bury the competition, while another group are already betting on fuel strategy. They're going to stretch the mileage and try to make that pay off to get to victory lane. Thanks, Jeff. Budweiser Speed Tweets is the new interactive game where fans compete for a chance to race go-karts with Kevin Harvick. Visit Budweiser.com slash for official rules and to register. 43 cars came for the 43 positions. We had some heavy clouds early in the weekend, but right now it is beautiful sunny. Some big puffy clouds moving in, and it's 73 degrees. We'll go 400 laps. 35 miles an hour down pit road, and they'll need Sunoco race fuel every 70 to 80 laps. Two cars went to the rear, Kyle Larson and Ryan Truex. And on the starter stand, our NASCAR on Fox director, Artie Kempner, and uh, there in the dashing hat is his wife, Marcy. Uh, they met while working their way up through production at CBS Sports. They've raised three boys, one of whom is autistic. And as the head of the Autism Society of Delaware, 
uh, they have done a tremendous amount to increase awareness and raise funds to help find a cause and ultimately a cure for autism. A great family making a great effort for a wonderful cause. I've never known Artie to get nervous about anything. He's really a little uptight about this uh, start of this race. Looked like Marcy was a little nervous about losing that pretty hat <laughs> yeah. she's wearing. She was holding on to it. Artie Kemner, don't you drop that green flag. Boogity, boogity, boogity. We will see you in February, boys and girls. Four or five car lengths from Brad Keselowski. Remember, Kyle has already won twice here this weekend. The truck race, the nationwide race. Boy, did he get a run off turn two on the top side where he started this race. And, Larry, there is no grip up high. I mean, you see everybody fighting for the bottom right now. It's all Ryan Newman in three and four. Got up out of that groove a little bit, and he almost hit the fence. Back at 13th, the first side-by-side -side battle, Casey Kane, Paul Menard. But on point, Kyle Busch trying to drive away. And if Kyle Busch leads 26 more laps, he would have led 10,000 laps of competition in the Sprint Cup Series at 29 years old. Just unbelievable. You just think back a couple, three years ago when he won Bristol. All three races, truck nationwide and cup, trying to do the same thing here today. Just an unbelievable accomplishment. Riding with Joey Logano, our Ford EcoBoost in-car camera, riding third. On the roller coaster, Daryl. Oh, yeah. Up and down. You go down in the corner and you come up out of the corner. You go down the front straightaway and dive off into the corner again. It's just it's just a track where you have to have really good rhythm. Up and down, up and down. And making a pass on the outside. Didn't think we'd see that early in the race, but Tony Stewart in the 14. The defending winner here at Dover, he is on the march. Yeah, that was Tony's last win, and we talked to Chad Knauss there in the pre-race about strategy. They did it with strategy, two tires on the final pit stop of that race. Greg Biffle went in a turn three right on the back bumper of A.J. Allmendinger and came off the corner to find Dale Jr. inside him. Yeah, Biffle got in a little too hard, and he almost ran into the back of Allmendinger. Had to lift out of the throttle, open door for Dale Jr. to shoot by on the inside. Junior moves up to 11th. So now Biffle may have to fend off Casey Kane. I think the interesting thing will be, I, I know in practice, we talk about the bottom is where the groove is, but in practice, as they start to lay rubber down and moved up the hill a little bit, saw a lot of guys working that high line in practice late yesterday afternoon. See when that comes in today. Stewart all but into the back of Paul Menard. Whoa, he is into the back of him right there. <laughs> Remember what we said, Mike, about racing hard every lap? I think there's a prime example. Hey, Smoke's in a hurry today. Stewart moves up to 16. Yeah, Bristol had not been good to Tony Stewart before winning that race last June. Four finishes of 20th or worse, but all of a sudden now he likes the concrete track. Here's another look at it. Larry, it's just really, really hard not to like some place where you win. Yes, sir. I mean, you, you, you still have a love affair with most any place that you can run good on and win. Well, you asked Carl Edwards about Bristol. That's Tony Stewart's best finish of the year, where he finished fourth at Bristol earlier in the year. And he got into the wall right there just a bit. Matt? Mike, a lot of concern from Stewart on the radio to spotter. Bob Jeffrey told him to look at that right front as he comes by. Could be considerable damage. Bob told him it does look fine to him. Uh, it, it looks fine. I don't see any tire rub. I don't see any smoke, but he does have pretty significant damage to that right front corner. Make sure the tire, tire care on the front there. Probably about at the 2 o'clock, the 3 o'clock. It might be bent in just a little bit, but if it is, it's not much. That's spotter Bob Jeffries. Yeah, I think I agree with Bob Jeffries, the spotter there. I, I don't think it's significant damage. I don't, again, I don't see any tire smoke, and that would be my first concern. Probably just need to bang that out when they make a pit stop. 11 laps in at Dover. Kyle Busch has opened up a one-second lead on Brad Keselowski, who started from pole. 
Joey Logano third, Kozlowski's teammate. And now the 47 of Almendinger inside. Dale Jr. outside, back straight away. And Earnhardt makes the pass. Pretty much every practice, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in this 88 team, they've been happy with this race car. He said they were just a little off in knockout qualifying on Friday afternoon. Started in 13th, now he's cracked the top 10. Yeah, and the car he's uh, coming up on the back of Brian Vickers in the 55. Now, Vickers is one of those guys that has moved himself way up the racetrack, running a really, really high line compared to everybody else. Uh, and it looks like it's working pretty good for him. And Darrell, watching practice yesterday, I felt like Brian Vickers in that 55 maybe had one of the better cars on the long run. Maybe not a short run, but the long run. Jimmy Johnson closing on Denny Hamlin, the FedEx Freight Toyota up high there. Kind of diamonds the racetrack, drops back down low from the middle of the corner for that drive off. And Hamlin holds on to fourth. Your Lowe's onboard camera giving you these views from Johnson. I mean, the banking on the straightaways here, nine degrees. That's more banking than a lot of racetracks that we go to that they actually have in the corners. And the straightaways are so short and the turns are so big. Very little time to relax. With that little bit of banking on the straight, you got to kind of hold the car up in the racetrack. And then you got to dive it off into these corners where the car lands and loads up. And then when it comes up off the corner like the 11 right there, the rear tires want to spin. The car gets real light on corner exit. Working underneath Blake Cook going a lap down. Lapping begins early here. Yeah, it, Mike, it will begin early because, look, the last time by uh, Kyle Busch ran a 2371. Guys, uh, let's take Cole Witt running 28. He just, his best lap's a 2414. So almost two seconds difference in lap times. 13th place for the 20. Moving up on Landon Castle is Kyle Busch, your race leader. Yeah, in roughly 15, 16 laps, our leader Kyle Busch in that 18's already starting to lap other drivers. What if he's got the broom in the car with him? Kyle in the Bush. Trunk. Got it in his trunk, I bet you. <laughs> Just Kyle in case. Bush trying for a clean sweep of the weekend's three races at Dover. Still leading after 23 laps. We take a KFC social media pit stop to see how to UKFC. There's Taylor Connor and friends. Snacking and watching racing. Very good. Third place. Denny Hamlin has caught Joey Logano trying to push that blue Toyota past Logano's Ford. He'll have to go to the bottom of Joy Legano on the 22, but we've watched Denny Hamlin. You see it right there. He's been moving up the racetrack almost since the drop of the green flag. You just got to be real careful when you're looking on the outside coming off the corner because that car on the bottom, even when he's trying to give you room, will shove up into you. You got to really watch on the corner exit. Jimmy Johnson there trying to work on the back of the 11 car. Denny Hamlin, while the 11 works on the back of the 22, Joey Logano got a little race going on here. And they may catch Brad Keselowski because Keselowski just ahead of them in the deuce has traffic ahead. I mean, look at this. You can look up under there and we can tell what springs he's got in the car almost is so low. That camera sits in the front valence about four inches above the concrete. That's a great shot. I love that. Yeah, we really, we really want to thank Denny Hamlin, crew chief Darren Grubb for allowing us to have that shot. Oh, boy, here goes Denny. He's got a nice run here. It's really hard to complete the pass. They need Reagan. the whole racetrack to be able to come up in front of that guy. And if he doesn't give it to you, you've got to let off. So Logano uses the 34 of David Reagan as a pick. I think Hamlin can squeeze between. The next time Kyle Busch comes to the stripe, it will be his 10,000th lap led in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Quite a milestone. And you know, we talked to him in the race day pre-race, and, and that was big on his list. He really wanted to accomplish that. He becomes the 15th driver in history to reach that mark. A lot of laps. And just turned 29 years old. He's going to be here for a long time. Yeah, he's going to set a lot of records. Daryl, in your era, 
drivers were just getting into a sprint cup car at that age. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Technology. Uh, you know, as we were talking to the sergeant down there a little while ago, you know, the prosthetic that he had so he could race in the car. Just think of the technology and the things that kids can do today that we couldn't do. It wasn't available to us. And that's why it's accelerated the, the, the youth movement so much. They can go run on our race and, do, and learn these tracks. We had to come to the track in an old crappy car and learn the track. Let's catch up on our second place car, Brad Keselowski. Here's Krista. That's right, Mike. The pole sitter has drifted back to second. Kyle Busch taking that lead early, but right now Brad is just hanging on. The reason his race car has gotten loose on lap 12, he told crew chief Paul Wolf, it's starting to get loose by lap 20. He said, Paul, I'm just too loose everywhere. Steve? Well, Chris, the early report from Jeff Gordon, he has lost one position. He says, my front end is not turning, and I'm really loose on exit in the corner. Jeff Gordon is seventh. After starting six, what do you run, Larry? About 80 laps? Is that a fuel window? 70, 80 laps. But, Mike, to your question to me at the top of the show about making adjustments, the more rubber that goes down on this racetrack, it's going to keep turning blacker and blacker. And that's going to change the grip level of these race cars. That's the reason you have to be aggressive with changes every stop. It's the reason I ask you about 80 laps because we're coming close to halfway through a run. And this is when the car will go through a huge transition. You burn off fuel, your tire pressure are built way up, and this is when your car is probably going to be at its worst. Speaking of worst, that's what Brad Keselowski's car has gone. Joey Logano, his teammate, and the other Penske Ford works his way around Keselowski. Now here comes Hamlin in the 11 and Johnson in the 48. And Larry, I know a lot of times we would start the car off maybe not like we wanted to have it on our first adjustment. Maybe a little air in the tire more than we would like to have, but so the car will take off. On the start of the race, you don't want to lose a bunch of spots waiting for everything to come to you. So your start of the race setup adjustments will be a little bit different than what you have as you go into the race. And, and I believe it, the deeper we go into this run, we will start to see drivers drifting back like Brad Keselowski and some drivers moving forward like we saw with Joey Logano. Well, tire wear, I, I, this is a, the first stop's always so critical. See what the tire wear looks like. See what the air pressure buildups look like. And then you can adjust from there. Maybe add wedge, adjust the tire pressures. A lot of things you can do once you have that information. Kyle Busch has led all 35 laps so far. High five for Tony Stewart before we start. Artie and Marcy Kempner up there with the green flag. The FedEx 400 Benefiting Autism Speaks is sponsored by FedEx. FedEx One Rate, simple flat rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. By four, beautiful things happen when you go further. And by Sprint, get the HTC One M8 Harman Kardon Edition exclusive from Sprint. That's researcher Patrick Perrin throughout the day during our billboards. You're going to see a lot of the NASCAR on Fox crew that uh, are normally camera shy and uh, do a great job for us all throughout the season. Let's take a closer look with Sprint. Kyle Busch has the fastest lap of the race so far. You can save with a Sprint family plan. We're up to 10 friends and family get unlimited talk, text, and a gig of data for as little as 25 bucks a month each on the Sprint network. Go to Sprint.com slash speed and start your family today. Just a comparison, just real quick. Last time by Kyle Busch, 24-34. He has slowed down considerably. But the back of the field, it's what's interesting. He has slowed down. The back of the field is still running in the 24s. So his fastest speeds are not are backing up where the guys in the back of the field are kind of maintaining. Okay. Now this is back at seventh place, Darrell, where Brad Kozlowski climbs the hill. Clint Boyer in the 15 may be able to take advantage or Dale Earnhardt Jr. I wonder when Brad was going to, he, he kept running the bottom, running the bottom, saying how loose his car is. And I'm thinking maybe you need to move up the hill a little bit and see if that helps. And I think it has. Fourth place, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick. Jimmy Johnson has gone to third now behind Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. Matt? Mike, similar to practice, Kevin Harvick's really the only issue is the car was getting freer as the run went on on exit. Same experience he's telling his team right now. Already making plans. We're three quarters of the way through the first run here. Making plans. You see he's starting to migrate up a little bit, like DW mentioned, trying to find a better lane for that handling. 
Darrell, my experience here, and I don't think it's changed, if your car is tight, not turning, the deeper you go in the run, it just starts pushing more and more. If you're loose, it just seems to get looser and looser. Yeah, and uh, this car, right, what's always interesting, this car, the 18 car, everybody else complained about their car, he's just going. He's just on the gas and going. He's not complaining about anything. So you get it right, you can really run through the field. And so is Jeff Gordon. He just passed uh, Kevin Harvick to move into the top five. Now the 15 of Clint Boyer climbs up to seventh, passing Kozlowski, and here comes Earnhardt. And you know, Mike, talking about Jeff Gordon and his back, I, I just know from experience getting in the race car, when you think, well, I don't feel all that great. Then you get in the car and it feels pretty good. And you say, oh, wow, I feel better than I thought I was going to. And you really actually excel doing better than you thought you were going to. It's funny you say that because he said in the media center Friday, he felt fine after that race. He said, now, Monday and Tuesday, that was a whole different game. Very sore. But he did feel fairly good when he got here on Thursday. That's your office. I mean, you're in your office and you got your favorite chair. You got everything at your fingertips. Uh, you know, it's just uh, it, it, when you're comfortable in the car, you can just overcome so much. Looking ahead from Denny Hamlin at Jeff Gordon, now fourth. Now Harvick looks to reclaim fifth as Hamlin is the one who's backing up. Yeah, I think Denny Hamlin at 11 and Brad Keselowski in the two, that would be two drivers in particular that would love to see a caution where they can get to pit road and get some adjustments on their race cars. And you what? know what else there, Mike? A lot of it's mental. A lot of times, you know, you, you, you mentally think that you can't do it, and, and then you don't. And uh, I think you get in a car and you mentally find out you're, uh, you can do a lot more than you thought you could. Now that's Reed Sorensen, the 36, click it or ticket. He's going a lap down to Joey Logano and Jimmy Johnson. As Logano worked the traffic, Johnson got right to his rear bumper. Now they move under uh, Danica Patrick. Rolling back into turn one. Patrick goes way up high toward the wall, but gets a good run off the corner to hold Johnson back. You know, I was watching that 22, that shot we had of him going off into turn three. We've heard that turn three's got a few more bumps in it, a few ripples over there. I was watching that 22 car when we were looking at the rear of him heading off in that corner. That thing was hopping up and down like a bunny rabbit. Which tells me they're probably pretty aggressive with their shock package, trying to keep speed in the race car. Yeah, I mean, I, I was surprised when I saw how much the car was moving up and down. Look at it right there. You can see it kind of hopping up and down as it goes off in there. Now, we're 55 laps into this race. Last June's race at Dover began with a long green flag run of 80 laps. Kyle Busch leads Joey Logano by 1.7 seconds at Dover. The FedEx 400 Benefiting Autism Speaks on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. 62 laps complete. Kyle Busch leading. Jimmy Johnson, the new second place car. Here's your Ford EcoBoost track backs for Dover. Richard Petty won the inaugural cup race in 1969, driving a Ford Torino. Ford's the only manufacturer to win five straight races at Dover for 1986 through 1988. Now, J.J. Yaley just finished a pit stop, as did Dave Blaney, but here is Yaley trying to get into the pits, and it appears he has a flat tire, and the car won't turn down on the flat, and he almost slid up into trouble. Now the caution is out, this time for Alex Bowman, who... Caution's out, caution's out. Right front damage hard, guys. Right front tire down. Bowman coincidentally brought out the final caution last Sunday night at Charlotte when a left front tire exploded. Yeah, we haven't this Dr. Pepper Toyota. Don't know of any tire issues, but it's kind of odd that the 44 and the 23 all of a sudden both have flat tires. We'll have to check into that. Caution was a big break for a few drivers like Ryan Newman in the 31. Kyle Larson in the 42, remember, had to start at the rear of the field because of an engine change. They were very close to going a lap down to our leader. A.J. Allmendinger completing service. He was on pit road when the caution flew. That is the pit road closed flag that you saw. And you see the damage to Alex Bowman's car. Yeah, because of how far A.J. Allmendinger was behind our leader, I think that's going to put him a lap down, though. 
25 cars were on the lead lap at the time of the yellow. Kyle Busch has been setting a pretty fast pace, but Jimmy Johnson had moved up to second, Jeff Gordon up to third, moving uh, Joey Logano back to fourth, and Kevin Harvick fifth. Pit road is still closed. Yep. Now the now the race on pit road starts, and how many cars can you pass on pit road? That's a that's the next big challenge. Let's have a look at what happened to rookie Alex Bowman. Right side of your screen. Car just didn't turn. Bowman was running 38th, two laps down at the time. Now Dave Blaney and A.J. Allmendinger had already made pit stops, so they may stay out on this caution. And our Aaron's lucky dog will be the number seven pilot. Flying J Chevy from Tommy Baldwin Racing for Michael Annette. He's your Aaron's lucky dog. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. Now we know every driver on the lead lap will pit. So what could happen with AJ Allman during that 47 stay out and he'll be able to take the wave around and get back on the lead lap. Mike, I noticed the front of the seven car of Annette. You saw it kind of popping along there. That's what you get on this concrete. You get that pop, 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 pop from those expansion joints or lines through the track. I noticed it quite significantly on his car. Kyle Busch will lead the lead lap cars onto pit road for the first time today. Matt Yoakum. Jimmy Johnson qualified fourth. Chad Canals took the first stall on exit of turn four. Pit road is first third of it is an angle. They made a chassis adjustment. Jimmy needed to have the race car deeper into the racetrack, Steve. Matt Jeff Gordon said his car is bouncing like crazy and it over rotates in the middle. They're going to remove a spring rubber from the right rear spring. He said on exit, I just can't lean on it like I need to. Krista. Kyle Busch said as soon as his car went loose, it went loose everywhere. They made a slight adjustment to tighten him up. Meanwhile, Joey Logano saying that his car took off tight, but when he moved up the track to the high side, he was able to handle that car better. Here's the Sunoco race off pit road. Kyle Busch maintains the lead. Jimmy Johnson, big move for Denny Hamlin. Remember, Steve Burns reported about the adjustment on Jeff Gordon. It was a quick adjustment, but lost him six spots. That's time consuming. Sunoco, official fuel of NASCAR. Welcome back to Dover, where Denny Hamlin's Toyota would have restarted third, but exiting his pit stall, he was nabbed for speeding. Hamlin is at the back of the pack as we go back to green and Kyle Busch tries to drive off this time from Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer. Yeah, not so quick. Mr. Johnson says hello. New player in town. Side by side for the lead off turn four. Yeah, Mike pit road speeds only 35 miles an hour. I mean, it's just you creeping down pit road here. So wouldn't surprise me to see more people get nabbed today. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 that we're riding with, he's a little better getting down into the corner and through the middle, but Kyle Busch just gets that run off. In fact, now Johnson has his hands full of Kevin Harvick in that four. Side by side for six. Jeff Gordon takes the spot. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Joey Logano. Now three of those cars were teammates. And what's wrong with Brian Vickers at 55? Yeah, down on power, that's what he was saying. I saw him dropping All back right, through the three. field. Sounds like am I having a motor problem? Vickers was 14th. And, and really felt pit. good about his car today. Yes. Really happy with it. Oh, Larry, that's how they do. <laughs> they, they never quit running when, you, oh, when they're no, running you, bad. You couldn't throw a boat down the carburetor no and blow them up when no. you're running bad. When she's running good, oh, hey. Darrell, that's a great shot to show how wide the corners are, but how narrow the exit of the corner is here. That's the concrete canyon going down the back straightaway and the front, really, but the back more so. I, it's amazing how narrow that back straightaway is. You can see right there. And if anything at all happens, <laughs> we almost saw it happen to the 20 car right there. Uh, you're you're down. Look at the, the look at the banking that runs you right down to that inside the safer barrier. There were your Toyota top performers led by Kyle Busch in fourth. They have three of the top five right now. Yeah, Matt Kenseth up in the top five and that 20 car started back in the 19th. They never could find what Matt was looking for and they finally hit on something in the final practice yesterday. 
Look at how many laps Kyle Busch has led this weekend. I, his, what, what amazes me about this kid is he does these races. He does three days in a row. I know there are 200 laps in the truck race, 200 laps. I, but just his stamina, to be able to sit in that race car, focus, drive as hard as he does every lap, and pull off wins. Pretty amazing. And you know, Daryl, keeping with the theme of the concrete racetracks like you addressed with Carl Edwards on the pace lap, we got some serious three wide race. Remember, A.J. Allmendinger had taken the wave around, and Denny Hammond at 11, the pit road speeding penalty. You're riding with it. This is the mess he's looking at up there. All right, here's the Hamlin team about that penalty. God, how is that possible? I don't know, bud. I haven't checked up. Once I cleared everyone, I just slowed way up, way before the 55. All right, I'm going to make this up. And when he says the 55, that's the location of the end of that timing period uh, where he was nabbed for going too fast. Yeah, and, and Hamlin, he kind of wears his feelings on his sleeve, and I like what I heard right there. I, I, we'll make it up. Normally, it would be like, oh, well, I guess we're not going to win this race. He doesn't feel that way at all. He got a good race car. He's going to fight back. Yeah, that segment he got busted in is just beyond where he was pitting. Jimmy Johnson wants the lead. Kyle Busch doesn't want to give it up. This is what we've been seeing ever since the restart. Look at Kyle Busch up a lane high, gets that launch off the corner. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 just cannot complete the pass. No, you got the, the corner exit is so tight. And if you just happen to lose the car a little bit, you slam into the guy beside you. So you have to really be careful and know you're clear of the guy on the outside of you when you make that pass. Johnson to the bottom. Oh, Kyle, a little wiggle there. But he did what he needed to do, Daryl. Jimmy got that car right there on Kyle Busch's left ear, got him a little loose. He couldn't carry that speed down the straightaway. It's funny you say that, because that's what a lot of these guys say, if I can just get to his quarter panel. And I don't mean wrecking. Just get up there and get that air off that quarter panel. That's exactly what Jimmy Johnson did. New leader for the first time today. Eight-time Dover winner, Jimmy Johnson, who's ahead of Kyle Busch, 14th straight race that Johnson has led here. And at seventh place, Joey Logano trying to hold Casey Kane. Now last week in Charlotte, remember that Chad Knauss got a, a setup from the five car to help them win Charlotte. As good as Jimmy is at Dover, I wonder if they reciprocated this week because the five car is looking pretty good today. And he passes Logano to move into seventh. A couple of drivers moving up from the back. Kyle Larson started deep in the, he started at the back. He's up to 18th. Carl Edwards started 29th, and Edwards has moved up nine positions. And we've talked about Denny Hamlin when the uh, speeding penalty on Hamlin. He is at 25th right now, last car on the lead lap. There are your big movers. I tell you, I, I, you heard Jeff Gordon talking about his car was bouncing a lot. I've heard drivers complain more about this racetrack being rougher this time here than it's ever been before. Watch that 22 car. He's, I, I keep watching him because his car seems to be one of the bouncing the most. Uh, you can see it on the straightaways. You can see it in the turns. See the other, that thing hopping up and down, bop, bop, bop. The other thing I see is we see Kevin Harvick in the four now taking the second spot away from Kyle Busch in the 18. I saw a little bit of debris on the grill opening of Joey Logano's 22 car. And you know what? The 18 car, once you get past for the lead, Jimmy Johnson got by him. It's not that you let, it's not that you slow down, but you get in a, you, you have a little bit of a change of attitude. Okay, I got a long way to go. I got a great race car. No need in pounding it every lap. Let these guys go. Let me take a little break here. Oh. In the wall, up car in the wall, turn three, bouncing off and continuing. Alex Bowman again, no caution. The FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks is sponsored by NOS. You only live once, you only live NOS. By the Dodge Charger, born Dodge. And by KFC. So many ways to KFC. How do you, KFC? 95 laps complete. There's the graphics department. Jimmy Johnson still leading in the FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks. Let's take another KFC social media pit stop and go down to uh, Milledgeville, Georgia. 
with a big bucket of chicken and some oh great looking lemon cake there. All right. Now as we went to break Alex Bowman brushed the wall but did no damage and kept going no caution. Meanwhile Brian Vickers has coasted into the garage. Krista. And Mike their day the 55 is done with Brian Vickers. I know this is disappointing because you guys started top 10. What went wrong and tell me about the disappointment. Yeah it's uh, it's tough. Um, the Aaron's dream machine was we had a good race car. We did a few tweaks on it to make it uh, I think a top five or a winning car. Uh, unfortunately, we lost an engine. Um, I don't want to speculate on why yet at this point. Uh, something seemed wrong with it coming out of the box after the yellow, uh, after the pit stop. And, and then as soon as we went green, it was just down on power. Um, it's tough. You know, I know it's frustrating for so many. We've had such a, a good string of runs. We wanted to keep that going. But uh, I know everyone at Toyota and TRD works so hard. Uh, and I'm sure they'll get to the bottom of it and, and get it fixed. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Christy. You saw Josh Wise's car on pit road as Jimmy Johnson continues to lead. Something stove in the rear end of the Reddit.com, iRacing.com 98, but Wise gets back in the race. You know, Mike Larry, these teams, these engineers, Toyota, Chevrolet, Ford, they can tweak these engines by, with the, what they call the mapping, and they can make them run with max power where they lean them out a little bit and get max power, or they can back that down a little bit and get you know, burn a little more fuel, not get quite as good of fuel mileage. And that's something that a lot of these teams struggle with on a race like today. A lot of guys think this could be a fuel mileage race. So you lean her back too much, you can have a problem. Now, Dover is a unique racetrack because it's a one mile concrete oval and it's a harness racing track within the oval. And across on the back stretch of the super speedway, that blue building is the grandstand for the harness track. Well, where there's horses, there's Jeff Hammond. <laughs> Well, thanks, Mike. I'm actually in the autism friendly suite here at Dover. And this is a, a suite that's unique to itself because no other uh, sporting venue has a special section like this for families with autism. And the cool thing about it is it allows these families to enjoy this race in a quieter environment. And they also have playrooms with toys in them in the event that everybody or somebody gets a little bit frustrated or tired of the race they can go up there and play a little bit but it's been a great environment the cool thing about it is a little bit of time that i've been here they are definitely denny hamlin fa hamlin fans as well as when jimmy johnson took the lead from kyle bush this place erupted so they're really into the race right here and it's great to see these families having such a great time at the racetrack today yeah, those toys were delivered this morning from Denny Hammond and some others from Toys R Us just up the street. They delivered them to that area early this morning. Yep, great initiative. Hats off to uh, FedEx, the Autism Society of Delaware, and Dover International Speedway. Denny Hamlin has had trouble expressing himself to the front. He had that speeding penalty and restarted 26. He's only been able to gain two positions since the restart. And the leader is coming in a hurry. I mean, Jimmy Johnson is about a quarter of a straightaway back right now and closing fast. That would be Jimmy Johnson, who has a six-tenth of a second lead on Kevin Harvick. There you see the difference. And there's Harvick in second place. Well, we all, what I like to do, and I think most drivers do for, for reference, they would be telling me right now, if I was in the 11 car, they'd say the 48 car's at the line now. That way I know it, it gives me a reference on the racetrack, so I know where he is, I know where I am. I don't need to hear about two or three seconds. Tell me where he is on the track. And I'm at the line now. Well, what Earl Barbin is going to be telling Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Spotter, with the lap times I'm seeing, it's not going to be long. He's going to be saying the four car Kevin Harvick is there. But now let me, let me correct somewhat. Hamlin started 26th position. But because you have to restart at the tail end of the longest line, he was 40th in the running order when he came to the flag. He's passed a lot of cars, just not that many for position. Down to the pits, Matt Yoko. Larry Mack, Chad Canals told Jimmy Johnson a couple laps ago, the four car of Harvick is coming and coming fast. He's working the high side. Jimmy told Chad his car is starting to get free on landing and going up the hill. That's the problem that Harvick had before that pit stop. Rodney Childers fixed that race car, which was snappy loose by a chassis adjustment. Boy, Jimmy Johnson at 48, he is in a wad over there. I mean, he almost had to put the brakes on and stop. Yeah, Michael Annette in the sevens trying to get back on the lead lap from Johnson as he came up on traffic double wide at the exit of the corner. Yeah, Johnson didn't, didn't need that because that allowed that four car. The four is there now. 
Now behind Harvick, Kyle Busch is four and a half back, then Clint Boyer, Matt Kenseth five and a half back, and then uh, Jeff Gordon in sixth place now, Steve. Well, Mike Drew, before the last pit stop, Jeff Gordon said my car is bouncing like crazy. They pulled a spring rubber out of the right rear spring to get that right rear tire in the track board. But Jeff just said, now I feel like I'm on basketball. <laughs> Matt. I, I, and Steve, his teammate, the five-car Casey Kane, he's gained three spots since that pit stop. The first run, he was slightly loose on exit. But now he's telling his team the car is really progressively gotten worse and worse. Really free, just trying to hang on at this juncture. And that basketball analogy here in, in Bristol are two places that you always use that analogy. Because, again, the car wants to hit those rough places, those bumps in the track. It builds an incredible amount of tire pressure in the right front, and it literally feels like a basketball with too much air in it. Right, with Dale Earnhardt Jr. there, we just saw him in his 88 car. He's falling back outside the top 10, back to 13th. Larry, as we talk top of the show, chasing the racetrack, we always see a lot of comers and goers uh, here at Dover. Somebody to start out with a, like a rocket, and if you haven't been in front of the TV set in 25 laps, you might wonder, why is Kyle Busch now five and a half seconds down? He was running away with this race. And it seems to be such a big opening in the window between a car that's good on a long run and a short run. That's where Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss have always been so good. They've been able to obtain both. And, it, and it's, it's only tenths of a second. We're not talking about your miles off. A couple of tenths makes a huge difference on this one-mile track as fast as you're going. From our Toyota onboard camera, that's Clint Boyer. Trying to move right up on Kyle Busch for third. And one of the drivers that's gained the most positions today is right behind Boyer. And that is uh, Matt Kenseth. Krista? Yeah, I talked with crew chief Jason Radcliffe this morning. He said really they were just slow off the truck, but they made gains yesterday. He felt like they'd have a pretty good car today if Matt could pass cars in traffic, which he has done. The crew also helped him on that last stop by gaining two positions. Right now, Matt saying he's just a little loose into the turns, not as fast across the middle. This has just been, always been such a great racetrack for Matt Kenseth. So think back to his very first career start here in September of 1998. He wasn't scheduled to run that race, but he subbed for Bill Elliott, who had lost his dad, he ended up finishing in sixth that day. It was funny. I watched that race yesterday. Elliott was racing Kenseth yesterday in the in the nationwide race. Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott. Tail son. <laughs> Back behind Casey Kane come Paul Menard, Brad Keselowski, and you saw Tony Stewart in the 14 just move into 10th, passing Joey Logano. Boy, and in fifth place, here comes the 24. Jeff Gordon. I don't know. It looked like Jeff came off turn two, and he was in the gas, and, and, and Matt wasn't. Uh, Jeff got an incredible run off turn two that time and was able to make the pass on the, on Matt Kinson in the 24. And all day, Darrell, that has been the 24 sweet spot. It's from the bottom there right up to the top, the exit of turn two. Jimmy Johnson is trying to put Ryan Newman in the 31 a lap down, along with uh, Ricky Stenhouse. Our nationwide insurance on board camera. Tell you right now, that won't be easy. <laughs> Ryan Newman doesn't give up. He will race you until you are finally way back, way past him. And, and that's what he should do, trying to stay on the lead lap. But yeah, he started in the 14th position, talking about Ryan Newman in the 31, but he dropped like a rock at the green flag. Yeah, remember I told you he was up the hill on the start of the race, almost hit the wall on the opening lap. Newman's a three-time Dover winner. Still looking for his first top five of 2014. 118 laps in in Dover. A lot of kids enjoying the race from the autism suite over on the back straightaway. <laughs> We're under caution. The clean sweep broom has lost all its bristles. Kyle Busch. Got helped up and into the turn one wall. Watch him race with Clint Boyer and Jeff Gordon here. Like I told you, when you come on the bottom like that and you come up the track, you need the whole track. And look like the 18 of Kyle Busch was about the right rear. Let's see where he is right here. He's right up to the corner. Yeah, just went in, run out of room. Boyer came up as uh, Kyle was coming off the corner. Let's ride with Clint Boyer. 
I'm anxious to see why Kyle Busch and that 18 didn't come to pit road. And uh, I think Clint Boyer knew. Clint Boyer has experience. Here, Kyle. They're calling A. Kyle, stop. Stop. They're calling you on that. Just stop. Remember, Clint Boyer has a little experience with people waiting on him. Think back to Phoenix. And uh, Kyle tried to get into to get to his garage stall. There was a sweeper truck in the way. Now let's ride with Boyer. Clear. All clear. Quick. Get up there. Out fast. Out fast. All clear. All clear. All clear. Yeah, I think the radio said clear, but I'm just don't appear it was clear. Should have been looking, look, looking, looking. Maybe not so much clear. It, it, it's the hardest thing to do at this racetrack is to come off of the corner underneath someone and you need the whole racetrack. And otherwise you got to give and Clinton didn't give. It's the second caution of the day. It comes at lap 125. Pit roads open, Matt. And Jimmy Johnson then said the adjustments they made on the last stop have made gains, but still need more. The car is too free, especially on the exit of turn four. Kevin Harvick, meanwhile, in the four car, he had much better drive off that run, but the car got tight. Steve. Well, Matt, Jeff Gordon is saying that his car is still edgy, and he said it's tight under throttle. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer, very concerned about the damage to the right side of his race car. Crew chief Brian Patty saying, be very careful with the sheet metal. We'll have to make another stop if we need to. Make sure you get that sheet metal off of the right rear tire. So methodical pit stop for the 15. And Matt Kenseth is going to scoot out and win your Sunoco race off pit road. Uh, we're from uh, Paul Menard. Check that Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick, of course, were well out ahead as uh, we watch the other cars battle to get off the pit lane. Kyle Busch all torn up and in the garage. The FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks is sponsored by FedEx. FedEx One Rate, simple flat rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. And by the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. Under caution at 129 laps in Dover, Kyle Busch walked to his motor coach without comment after getting into the wall after contact from Clint Boyer. Afterwards, before they went get to the garage. Outside. Get back outside. Here he comes inside of me. Right on bumper. Keep going. That's our help, but you keep going. Don't let him hit you. All right, all right, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Now get up top. Get up top. Now get that's up Brett top. Griffin. He is Clint Boyer's spotter, trying to get him away from an angry Kyle Bush. KP, I just got word from the 20 that the spotter of the 15 cleared him. That's the spotter's fault, not driver's. Order 20. So that was relayed to Kyle Bush from his team. Well, but I told him to get up there. We were clear. I don't know. I feel like. Hmm. Yeah, it's just a failure to communicate. I mean, I'm not trying to make light of anything, but it just uh, obviously Boyer didn't understand or the spotter couldn't, didn't have a good sight line or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, what I really liked. I saw Dave Rogers and the whole 18 team were common getting Kyle under control. Don't do anything you'd be sorry of here. The field is reassembled and we're going back to green. Michael Annette got the free pass. So we will restart with 24 cars on the lead lap and with Kyle Busch in the garage along with Brian Vickers and David Stremme. Green flag. Jimmy Johnson against Kevin Harvick. And Jimmy Johnson chose the outside because we've seen on these restarts that's definitely an advantage to be on the outside. You get the run right there like off turn two. The inside, Larry, seems to get wheel spin too. I noticed yesterday we're doing that a lot. That outside was really the way to go. A little three wide, a little dart and dive into the corner. And then wove it up and regroup. Now Kyle Bush was third in line on the outside. He did not get a good restart. And that backed up the whole outside lane into turn one. Oh, oh, a little slip and slide there for Kyle Larson. Just in front of Dale Jr. 
Boy, that, that was, could have been big. That was tight. But what a run for Kyle Larson in that 42 car. He's working, trying to crack the top 10, started at the rear of the field at the start of this race. Hey, Larry, where does he run really good at as well as uh, here at Dover? Uh, I think he runs pretty good at Bristol, doesn't Bristol, he? Bristol, yes, sir. Got a feel for that concrete, man. You got to have it. Yep, both those tracks have a concrete racing surface. Good run for Larson. Oh, trouble over on turn two, guys. Big trouble. The six car hard in the wall the is 17. Biffle. Came across and got you. We're going pretty bad here, guys. Landon Look. Castle spins to try to miss him, and Ricky Stenhouse is wrecked. Made contact there, and I'm sure we'll take a look at it. Stenhouse in the 16 car. Well, we're done. I'm good. And they are teammates at Roush Fenway Racing, and that's two of Jack Roush's three cars knocked out. And Mike, Greg Biffle, 84 consecutive races without a DNF. They may get that car fixed and get him back out there. Ricky Stenhouse climbs out uninjured. A.J. Allmendinger tipped Stenhouse who got up into Biffle and around they went. At 135 laps, the FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks is under the red flag. Cars have been stopped for a pileup out of turn two that began when A.J. Allmendinger rocketed off the bottom, slid just barely up into the 17 of Stenhouse, and then Trying to regain control, slid up into the 16 of Biffle. Justin Allgaier, the 51, comes in on the inside. He collides with the 47, straightens him up. And behind them, the 83 of Ryan Truex turns around the 40 of Landon Castle. You're riding with Stenhouse. 16 inside, 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 clear low. Yeah, the brush from the 47 right here, the 17 never lifts. He stays in the throttle. He thinks he's okay, just a little contact. But that show, that, that right rear da uh, contact with the 17 and got the 47 loose. And uh, that shot him up into Greg Biffle in the 16. And then from there it was on. All that blue foam, foam flying is from the right door panel, inside of the door panel on Stenhouse's car, that safety foam. Yeah, another thing that makes these cars safe is the crush factor. All these things that are crushing and flying apart, that's good. Now, from this angle, you'll also see the 40 of Castle spinning from contact. Came across and got you. We're going pretty bad here, guys. Down to the garage, Chef Hammond. Yeah, heavy damage on the 16 car, Greg. Uh, you saw the replay. What, what was your part? Uh, what do you think inside the car? Yeah, it just looked like, uh, you know, it looked like AJ was driving, you know, pretty hard like he always does. And, you know, just didn't quite have enough room there and caught the front of the 17 car and turned himself up into me. But, you know, that's racing. That's what happens. It's pretty tight around this concrete, uh, you know, mile. And that's why they call it the monster mile. It's it's. It's a tough place, and there's no margin for error. And uh, when you know when a guy makes a mistake like that, uh, usually multiple cars are going to pay for it. Right now, your uh, crew is kind of surveying the damage. I know we're under red flag, but it looks like they're going to get you back out. Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll get back out, you know, 50, 100 laps down, and uh, be able to finish up. But you know, we got a lot of work to do. It's tough. Uh, top for us. We got freight trained on the outside on that restart. We had a pretty good car, but you know, lots of rubber being balled up. And so that second groove was really slick on that restart. I lost about four or five spots and I got back there where AJ was racing and uh, it was all over for me. A little bit of frustration down here, but they're going to fix the 16, they say. Thanks, Jeff. We listened in on AJ Allmendinger. Damn 17, I got an under me, turn right back under me, or into me. I don't know why, it, I mean, I was clearly past him when he turned back under me. Hmm, not sure about that. That's one driver's point Yeah, of view. I mean, that, that's, that's certainly uh, one way to look at it. And there's Stenhouse's car taken back to the garage on the hook. He has been released from the care center. But let's talk about Greg Biffle's streak. 
Yeah, I mean, 83 races to be running at the end of every one of those. It was working on 84 races, and that's that's huge for Greg. That's huge for that race team. That's almost two and a half years worth of races, but it sounds like they're going to try to get that car repaired back out there. That's big for a race team to have a zero in the DNF column. Brian Truex car heavy damage after contact next Saturday on Fox Sports one kicks off a full day of Major League Baseball action beginning with the Indians taking on the Rangers then it's baseball night in America on Fox you'll see Red Sox Tigers Yankees Royals or A's O's our MLB doubleheader begins Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports one continues at 7 Eastern on Fox to find Fox Sports one on your provider go to Fox Sports one dot com. They did the mesh. They did the monster mesh. Red flag is out. Let's get highlights from Chris Myers. Mike, here's a quick recap. If you hadn't watched it from the start, Kyle Busch taking the lead from pole sitter Brad Keselowski and led the first 81 laps. Remember, he was going for the sweep after winning the uh, truck race and the nationwide race. Had some problems as Jimmy Johnson moves into the lead, and Jimmy has led 53 laps so far, but things come to an end when he brushes with Clint Boyer in the wall. Yeah, Boyer moved up the hill. Kyle was there. They got together and went, and uh, Kyle hardened the inside wall at the end of the front straightaway. In this situation here, it looks like A.J. Allmendinger is trying to make a pass on the bottom, maybe hacked Ricky Stenhouse Jr. off, and he clipped him a little bit there and turned those cars sideways, and there was a big crash again. Radio transmission from some of the Roush team saying, hey, that 17 kind of got shot right through there creating a problem we've gone from the red flag as of lap 135 now under caution should be ready to roll with Jimmy Johnson leading Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth you're watching NASCAR on Fox we are live in Dover Delaware hi I'm Lindsay Theory here are three things you need to know Mariners second baseman Robinson Cano is out of today's game against the Tigers with a sore hand he's now missed four straight the Rays place reigning AL Rookie of the Year Will Myers on the 15-day DL with a sprained right wrist. And with the Blackhawks having all the momentum heading into Game 7, can the Kings pull off the upset in Chicago? Find out with every highlight every night on Fox Sports Live, the one for the playoffs. Thanks, Lindsay. Back at Dover with Darrell Waltrip and Larry McReynolds, I'm Mike Joy. It's the FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks. You can visit Chevy.com to learn more about the all-new Chevy Silverado, the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. I've got one. It's a terrific truck. We are getting ready to go back to green with Jimmy Johnson leading Kevin Harvick and some of the cars damaged in that crash, like A.J. Allmendinger and Landon Castle, still being repaired on pit road. A lot of work on Alex Bowman's car. He's been up and into the wall. And what they're trying to do, there, there's a, a panel inside that wheel well, I think, that seals off the cockpit to the outside of the car. You can get a lot of fumes in there if that's not sealed up. I think that maybe is what he's trying to do is seal that area up. Yeah, because the exhaust pipe, the tailpipes run out the right side, right in front of that right rear tire. And if that is open to the inside of the car, you'll, you, you, can't stay, you can't stand that very long. Not only is it real hot, but you get all the carbon monoxide and everything else up in a car with you. Let's take a closer look at today's action with Sprint. Biggest mover, Kyle Larson started at the rear and has gained 30 positions in his Chip Ganassi Chevrolet. Draft off your family and save with a Sprint family plan. Up to 10 of your friends, your family can get unlimited talk, text, and a gig of data for as little as 25 bucks a month each on the Sprint Network. Visit your Sprint store and start your family today. Let's get some audio from Casey Kane's team talking about restarts. For some reason, Jimmy started really late that last restart. I'm not sure what he was doing. He didn't go until the second line. Yeah, I thought I kind of had... I was thinking he'd go earlier, that's why I was all screwed up. Yeah, just wait and see what he does this time. And that's why Casey Kane did not get a good restart. Think about the race here last year. The restart cost Jimmy Johnson the race. Remember, he went early and uh, ended up getting black flagged. We're going to add one lap to get the lineup straight. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, 
Uh, Matt Kenseth, Paul Menard. Now, yesterday in final practice, 42 of the 43 cars were on the racetrack for final practice. The one driver who was not was Dave Blaney. The reason? He was the leader of the 25th class of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and was inducted yesterday. 1984 USAC Silver Crown Champ, 1995 World of Outlaws Champion, one of the most soft-spoken, nicest hard chargers in our sport. Congratulations. And thanks to uh, longtime producer director Greg Stevens for giving us the heads up on Blaney's induction into the Hall of Fame yesterday. Yeah, Darrell, you're right. A year ago, it's where it started all of the problems with restarts and the restart rules. It took all the way to Chicago, the first race of the chase, before we pretty much straightened it out. But you can see that is the restart box right there. That's what the driver sees, and it comes all the way across, and then you see lines on the inside. This is the area right here that the leader can start that race. If he gets to the single line and has not accelerated, then the flagman will restart the race. It's a little more difficult than it sounds, though, because that restart box is in the turn. And so the, you see the guy on the inside seems to be at disadvantage. The guy on the outside has the advantage because it seems to be wheel spin down on the bottom of the track, clean track up where Jimmy restarts. He definitely took it deep in that restart box before he went. Well, he's messing with the guy that knows how to play that game, too, Kevin Harvey. And, and Kevin it'll be Harvey. Kevin Harvick. From the inside, it's really the first time we've seen the inside prevail on a restart or even the start of the race. I'll tell you, Harvick says, you want to play games? <laughs> I'll play games with you. Kevin Harvick puts his Budweiser Chevrolet in the wind. He is the third different leader of today's race. Saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. make an aggressive move. He's underneath Martin Truex. Big knot of cars right there. Well, you should have seen what Kyle Larson in that 40 car, 42 car did. I mean, he took them three wide and went to the inside. A lot like what Amadeo was trying to do, but he made it. But, Darrell, we've seen this all year long. These drivers know that's when you have, you can really get some advantage or gain some spots is on the restart. Watch it. Watch this move he puts on these guys down here in the middle of one and two, Larry, the 42 car. You'll see him. He just comes here, here, and look, that's Tony Stewart and Joy Logano up on the outside. They run up on the back of the 99. Now, watch this 42 car, the rookie Larson. He comes through there with a head of steam, baby. He's going somewhere. And that then was the, did the slide job right up in between Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. That was the same move A.J. Allmendinger pulled, except there weren't all cars right to his outside when he did it. Denny, pass, uh, Denny Hamlin gets past the 42, and here comes Jeff Gordon. Fourth place against Paul Menard. Gordon's got a good race car, boys. I mean, he's been real steady all day long. He hadn't been terribly happy with it, but it's been pretty competitive. But I do want to give a call to Paul Menard in that 27 car. Up there in the top five, started in 13th. To some degree, he's carried the banner for Richard Childress Racing. He has the only top five that organization has, a third place at Las Vegas. Larry, the big crash happened off turn number two. We talked about how the turns are so wide here, but the choke point of this racetrack is right under that crossover bridge, the exit of turn number two right there. But Daryl talked about it earlier. The car wants to lunge to the wall there, and if you're side by side, your car almost lunges into the car that's beside you. If you were driving the race car and you could see the perspective of coming off turn two and coming off turn four. Totally different. Turn two is almost like a you're running into a cave, into a canyon, and you run out of room in a hurry over it. The perspective is totally different. This track is supposedly symmetrical, but it doesn't drive that way at all. Time for the best sports audio engineer in the business, Freddie Aldis, to give us a NASCAR on Fox. Crank it up.
Kevin Harvick has held the lead now for 12 laps, but Jimmy Johnson closes back in. He's three tenths of a second off the front position. Let's go down to the garage, Jeff Hammond. Yeah, I've caught up here with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And uh, Ricky, what happened over there in that corner from your perspective? Uh, from my seat, it was, uh, you know, we had a restart there. Uh, some lead lap cars were in front of us. I was just trying to maintain a little bit there. And the 47 came flying up the inside. And uh, I just tried to stay out of his way. And he caught my left front, got up into Greg Biffle there, who was on the lead lap. Uh, you know, that's uh, probably the worst part about it is getting your teammate caught up in it. Um, and then our nationwide insurance Ford just got destroyed and um, not the day we wanted. Uh, our Ford was really, really loose and uh, we were trying to get, get it tightened up and thought we were headed in the right direction. Just uh, needed to catch a break or two and uh, that was a tough day to our end. But, um, you know, we'll come back fighting hard and uh, on to Pocono. Thanks, Jeff. Tough break for Stenhouse. He's in the garage along with Greg Biffle, Kyle Bush, David Stremme, and Brian Vickers. Martin Truex 13th in the 78. Kyle Larson stalking him. Remember the rookie Larson started at the back of the pack, but he's made some impressive passes and a lot of games. I've been watching Eric Alvarola in this 43 car starting back in the 23rd position. If you look back at his last two or three races, finished 11th at Charlotte, three consecutive top 15 finishes, and outside of the four Team Penske drivers, he by far is representing Ford the best here today, sitting there in eighth position, actually won a truck race here in 2010. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right behind him in ninth. Joey Logano rounds out the top 10, 155 down, 245 to go. Casey Mears and Jamie McMurray, the all-star winner. 16th place there, changes hands. Oh boy, that, uh, you want to see a slide job? Good job, man. That was a slide job, that's what we call a slide job. <laughs> the spotter just said good job, oh, there yeah. was a whole lot he no, could do that. I don't know what he would have said if he hadn't have made it, but that was a good job. <laughs> oh, not so uh, here, 41, inside. Wow. Has he cut a tire down, Daryl? Yeah, I didn't see. It didn't look like it. Right now, it. he's going to try to wait to get to pit road, but he's way up against the wall, and caution waves for Jamie McMurray at lap 158. I'm not sure what happened to McMurray. The car looked good coming off four when he made that pass. He did put a slide job, but he didn't hit anything. Well, our, they'll look on the track. Oh, wow. That, that looks, looks like oh, a full that's a, can of that's beverage. A, that's a beverage of some kind. And that shot him up into the wall. Wow. Wow. Well, it could have been a beverage can. It could have been a piece of concrete. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, oh yeah. Brian Newman kicks it up and wow. You know what? That's a piece of the track, guys. They were over there in turn two working last night yeah, in that it, area of the racetrack. When it exploded, it looked like bear, it looked like fluid went somewhere, but that's a piece of the racetrack. It's a big chunk of track right there. Well, we hadn't had the pothole in, a, what, several years now. Well, we had a piece of concrete come up at Martinsville. Jeff some Gordon got ago. it through exactly. his grill some time ago. Pit road's open, Matt. And the leader, Kevin Hark, is in. The call is two tires and a chassis adjustment. Meanwhile, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, they're going to go four tires. Jimmy said he would have been great if he'd gotten the lead on the restart. In traffic, it was tight. Steve? Matt, Jeff Gordon says the car starts tight, but it's slowly coming to us. Right sides only for Jeff Gordon. Krista. As Matt Kenseth pulls into his pit stall, you see his crew going to work. They reminded him just slow and easy. And there you see just a two-tire stop for Matt Kenseth. We had 18 laps on those tires. A lot of them electing to try just right side tires. Boy, it's hard to believe that a piece of the track would come up. But that's well, exactly what happened. Well, if that was a chunk happened. of concrete, oh, yeah, we definitely. believe it was. Look at the damage done. And let's have a further look here at turn number two. And, and Mike, you see that kind of white look? Yeah. It's and, where the track but, has been ground. But look at where it is, Daryl. It's right at the corner of an expansion joint. Exactly. Or maybe it's that, hmm. been ground right there. Top 
off the right front tire or I hit something. I, I don't know what happened. The track, the, Casey Mears said the track came up. You hit a huge piece of the track and it built a splitter. Wow. Let's take one more look at that chunk of concrete that Ryan Newman kicked up and pow, Jamie McMurray pulverizes. Under caution at 159 laps in Dover, Delaware. Miles the Monster coming apart. NASCAR officials and track crews looking things over in the FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks. An area of turn number two right at the intersection of two expansion joints. Uh, that area looks like it had been ground at one time and now a piece of concrete has come out of there. Kicked up by Ryan Newman's car into the front splitter of Jamie McMurray's car. The red flag has de been displayed and they're mixing some very fast setting cement with bottled water to go into that area and make the repair. Let's, Let's go see back where this started. Yeah, I mean, we here's Ryan that. Newman coming through the corner right here. And there, it, it, all of a sudden, a piece of concrete kind of knocks it up out of the hole, uh, out of the track. And then here comes Jamie. And at first, first look, it looked like fluid. It looked like a can of beverage of some kind. But he, uh, Jamie got a lot of debris flying around from that piece of concrete. Wow. Yeah, a few more pieces there flying down yeah, to the inside, down the inside wall down over here. And Mike, uh, I, uh, folks, I can't tell these cars put in, a, in these tires, the way they grip the track and the way they go, the, the way these cars have so much downforce them, they are loading up these racetracks. Well, at Daytona, they used Bondo to take care of a pothole, but they have some quick setting uh, type concrete that should be able to yeah. make now a with, quick set surface. With the red flag displayed, teams cannot work on their car. I disagree with NASCAR not letting Jamie McMurray's team work on that one car because you know what? This was not anything. This was an element of the racetrack. I just feel like they should let them work on that race car right now. Yeah, I agree with that. However, I believe the precedent was set at Martinsville when Jeff Gordon wasn't Gordon leading the race and hit a chunk of concrete, uh, went into the nose of his car. I agree with that, Larry, but I don't think our friends do. I know they don't, but it's just, again, it's, it was not something that was self-inflicted. It was an element of this racetrack out of their control. I feel like no different than what happened at the Coke 600 oh, last yeah, year. No, I, they should I, let them work on that race car. I think you're right. 2004 at Martinsville was the occasion we talked about and uh, then 2010 a bit of turn number two the asphalt in turn two had issues at Daytona in both cases repairs were made quickly let's show you what we're talking about back in 2004 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia which has concrete corners and asphalt straightaways there's the chunk of concrete going into the nose of Jeff Gordon's car NASCAR President Mike Helton and Gordon out there, out there looking over the surface. And Jeff pleaded his case to yeah. Mike Helton about letting them work on the car. So we're under the red flag briefly here in Dover. The FedEx 400 Benefiting Autism Speaks on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. By Toyota, let's go places. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? At this red flag, Kevin Harvick is leading. Harvick has led more laps today at Dover International Speedway than in his prior 20 races here. He led a total of 12. Today, Harv's been out front for 20 laps. Kyle Busch led 81 uh, before getting nudged up and into the wall and out of the race. Jimmy Johnson has led 57. Matt Kenseth has led one lap. So four different leaders thus far. Let's get back down to the Hollywood Hotel for highlights. 
All right, thanks, Mike. A quick recap. Kyle Busch, who came into this race starting on the front row. Remember, he won the uh, truck race on Friday nationwide. On Saturday, led the first 81 laps of this, battling for third with Clint Boyer. Goes into the wall. There was some spotter discussion, and Kyle Busch rather upset about having to leave this one early. Lap 134. Uh, I.J. Allmendinger creates problems for the Roush. Yeah, he shot underneath Ricky Stenhouse. Looked like Ricky came down a little bit as they exited two, got into to uh, A.J., and it caused a big crash. And then Harvick started on the inside. We haven't seen anybody prevail from the inside line and takes the lead from Jimmy Johnson. And then most recently, this is Jamie McMurray, and you see that part of the track here in Dover that was sticking up, causing damage to his car. He was running in the in the top 15 at the time. The winner of the All-Star race, Jamie McMurray, searching for his first victory, points race victory of this season. And the Pottle, right now they have a crew. They're using a two-part epoxy on this. Uh, the title is Quick Rock, is what they call the actual material. We were just chatting in here, Michael, before we came on. As we walked you back to the uh, Hollywood Hotel, it was uh, 2010. Of course, the guys upstairs showed Martinsville, but the Daytona 500 in uh, 2010. Remember, there was a, a problem in the track, and Jamie McMurray won that race. I think they used Bondo back uh, back to fix the track at that time. They did, and Jamie was able to prevail in one of the most entertaining Daytona 500s ever. So uh, if anything is like Daytona in 010, we're getting ready to see a heck of a race. The groove has widened out. There's many options when they hit the corner. Like I said a second ago, Harvick took the lead from the inside. That's going to open up the starts a bit. Everybody said you got to be on the outside. That's not necessarily the case. Yeah, now Kevin Harvick is a guy who's been very public about the pit crew in recent weeks. I mean, he, he could have had maybe more than two wins. He's the only driver, by the way, this year who has led at the halfway point and then gone on to actually win the race with his, his two wins. So restarts and pit stops, obviously uh, we've had our second red flag already, but that should determine the outcome of this race when we get to the last 100 miles. Uh, well, Denny Hamlin brags on his pit crew all the time, but he made a mistake on pit road. He sped, went to the back. He's charged all the way back to the front. That determination that Denny Hamlin shows when things go wrong, that could be the difference maker for him today. And unfortunate, Brian Vickers came in eighth in points, part of Michael Walter bracing a terrific comeback story when you talk about on and off the track, having some problems uh, early and out of the picture at the moment. But five different leaders, seven different lead changes, four cautions, and two red flags as we fix the track at the Monster Mile. And the red flag out here at lap 160. So we still have uh, quite a bit before we even get halfway and like i said the competitiveness of this race is going to go through the roof let's head upstairs to daryl larry and mike thanks chris uh, the cement they're using uh, as you mentioned is called quick rock it's a chemically engineered hydraulic cement it mixes with water uh, controlled expansion allows it to withstand loads in excess of 10,000 a psi and it sets within 15 minutes. It's a fast setting anchoring cement and it's something that uh, the NASCAR safety crews carry with them to every race just in case of something like this. Let's uh, let's talk to Kevin Harvick here later in the race. Uh, Kevin Harvick, DW, you got a copy there, my friend? I got you, man. Hey, Harv, the track came up over there off of turn two. Had, had you noticed anything over there? Yeah, I mean, there, that, that corner had been knocked out uh, for a while. We were actually looking at it last night before the nationwide race, and it had like a black sealer around it, uh, just a little corner of the concrete pick. So I guess it finally worked its way out. Yeah, it did. It looks like you're having a great run here, Harv. Looks like the pit crew's doing their job today. How's things going for you? I think everything's going good. You know, it's uh, such a track position game. I mean, you saw the difference, uh, you know, being in front of the 48 and then us being behind the 48. It's just uh, our cars are pretty evenly matched, but I think track position in, in the end is going to be uh, what decides, uh, you know, who wins this race. So we got to do all we can do to, to keep up with the racetrack and, and uh, not make any mistakes, but uh, still a long ways to go at this old place. Yeah, you know, 10-4, does it, it's on the run, on a long run, what happens to your car? Does it, does it create a lot of push? Does it get loose? What happens to your car on the long run? Yes. Uh, yeah, it does all that. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is just one of those places where your car is never going to handle very good. You know, you, you try to get it the best that you can and, and just get it better than everybody else's. It's going to bounce around. It's going to slide the back. It's going to push the front. And you just try to minimize everything. And, um, you know, for, for, for me, I, I try to, um, you know, concentrate on the exit of the corner as much as I can to, to be able to power down the straightaway. So um, all in all, you just you just try to make it better than everybody else's because it's, it's not going to feel good. This is just one of those racetracks that's like that. 
Yeah, one more thing. D did you find hard the track to be bumpier and rougher this time than it's been in the past as we've come up here? I don't know about that. I, I think um, I think that this this rules package probably lends itself to uh, a little rougher ride than than what we've had in the past, just for the fact that you know the cars are way down on the ground and uh, a little more rigid than, than what they've been in the past. So tracks uh, tracks been rough. Those bumps in the three have been there for a while. A lot of you know it's like riding your skateboard down the sidewalk. Um, you know, it's just got those those bumps as you go all the way around the racetrack. So it's a uh, it's a tough place uh, to to uh, to get a good feel for, but a fun place to drive. All right, buddy. Thanks for talking to us, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, it appears the repair has now progressed to a second small area of the concrete there in turn number two. The the cornering loads are so heavy because it's not just cornering, you're also under acceleration, full acceleration, and the side bite that the tires have to get. Uh, really pretty big. So the one, uh, one spot has been repaired, and another smaller area uh, Mike, we is talk also being worked on. We talk about these tires being like blades almost, and these tires really are, they really cut into the, here the concrete, on an on asphalt track into the concrete. They really dig hard. That right front is loaded up so much, and of course you heard Larry saying, even had Harvick say, they knew there was a little bit of a problem there. They worked on apparently last night a little bit. And you just think about <clears throat> these cars bottoming out as many times as they bottom out. That obviously hurts the integrity of the concrete. Yeah, it's it's just like a greater blade. I mean, when you see what these things do when they go out across the grass. I mean, and, and when they're bottoming out and bouncing up and down, it's just you know it works on any weak spot in the track. While they work on the track, we'll remind you that weeknights you can join Mike Hill and Molly McGrath for America's pregame. They'll bring you live reports from the biggest games to get you ready for all the action. America's pregame weeknights, 6 p.m., only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now to find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com now. Today is the 236th NASCAR on Fox Sprint Cup Series broadcast and for most all the way we've been together with you up here in the Fox booth now for 14 years and so have most of the people in the production trucks down in the Hollywood Hotel working in the pits and garage area and up in the weather giving you the great pictures so we can bring you our accounts of this race. Let's meet our Fox camera crew. Hey everyone, my name is Nelson Hastings and I've worked as a cameraman on NASCAR for 25 years. I would like to take this moment to introduce you to some guys that have some great nicknames. And hey, they're also pretty good camera guys too. We have Michael Drains, Drano. And there's Dave Miller, Pony. Tim LaBeouf, Buffy. And who could forget Terry Ford, Turtle. We have Donnie Russell, known as Donnie Russ. Pretty good guitar player too. Andy Mitchell, Mitch. Dave Geller, Cubby. And my partner on the roof, Steve Sajak. Stevie Z. On the handhelds, we have Phil Kelly, also known as PK. Lovable Dave Stolen, Stolen. Brad Hutton, Goat. Ed Oberfeld, Eddie O. And the movie star himself, Don Cornelli, Donnie Dayoff. Plus, you have Chris and John and Tim and Don in the robo world. And last but not least, the Jib guys, Pat and Josh. So from all of us who operate the cameras, we would like to say thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox. Nice job, Nelson. You sounded like Bruce introducing the E Street Band. Well done. For some of our fellows, neither rain nor snow nor dead of night will keep these men from bringing you great pictures for NASCAR on Fox. Here's a bit of irony. Back in Daytona in 2010, the pothole race was won by Jamie McMurray. Well, what goes around had to come around. Jamie McMurray is the car that has the damage from hitting the pothole here at Dover. Let's go to his pit and Steve Burns. And I'm with the crew chief, Keith Rotten. Uh, this crew is just itching to get to work on this number one car. And, and Keith, uh, maybe the folks at home can't see it, but it looks like there's a lot of damage to the splitter. Yeah, uh, when we ran over the track there and exploded the track, it kind of broke or split her in half and uh, knocked the pan out underneath the car and hurt the right side a little bit also. And then we got into the wall. So uh, everyone on the Cessna Chevy SS team is just looking to try to get 
get to work here. I wish we could work on it right now. It's kind of a tough situation uh, we're in and tough situation NASCAR's in, but we're, uh, we're ready for this red flag to be lifted. So, Keith, we understand on a red flag you've been told you can't work on it, correct? Yeah, that's correct. How long will it take you to affect the repairs? Well, I, I don't know if we'll get it back to where it was. We finally got our car running really good there, and um, we drove up and threw a bunch of them. But we'll do the best job we can and uh, see what we get. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. We're told that that quick rock hydraulic cement needs about five more minutes to cure. They're <laughs> testing it out now. And then we should be able to get this race back underway. 160 laps have been completed. 240 to go here on a beautiful sunny day in Dover, Delaware. Now there may be a little more damage uh, elsewhere. Jeff Hammond. Yeah, Mike, uh, we're here at the crossover bridge to exit a turn two. You can see safety workers and NASCAR officials down in there. They're actually using duct tape to try to repair one of the panes of glass that protects the guys and gals when they walk down this uh, walkover bridge has actually been cracked because that piece of concrete that Jamie Mack hit broke it. You see all the, all the uh, steel uh, retainers that they have up there, but unfortunately this type of glass right now, whenever he hit that piece of concrete, actually cracked that section, and they're actually trying to effect repairs before they can let anybody go across it. So uh, be another five or ten minutes, they'll have this ready for people to be able to go back and forth across. But uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty big piece of concrete, and pretty much an uh, incredible amount of speed right there to hit that piece of glass. Wow, thanks, Jeff. They have a walkover bridge at Dover because they tried to dig a tunnel. We're right next to the Atlantic Ocean. They got down about four feet and hit water and couldn't evacuate it. In fact, the highest point in Delaware is some 300 feet lower than the level of Lake Norman in North Carolina. I mean, we are right on the Atlantic Ocean. So they built a walkover bridge instead, uh, which has stood there for more than a decade without incident until now. There are actually two bridges, one at the beginning and one at the end of the back straightaway. The second one was built with help uh, from DuPont, and it's called the Monster Bridge, and it's not a walkover bridge. Those are seats, and those are race fans in that very VIP viewing area where you look right down the throat of that back straightaway and see all the action. Yeah, there would be no other seat in NASCAR that would equal what those seats right there are, right over the back stretch, headed off into turn three. Had some friends that sat over there and uh, watched the race, and they said, first of all, take your earplugs and a headset and, a, and some earphones because it's really loud. It's, they said it feels like you're right down on the track with the cars. I think it's an experience unequaled in sport to be able to sit literally right on top of the action. It's been our pleasure this NASCAR season for Fox Sports Supports to team up with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Boys and Girls Clubs help young people to reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens through programs that promote character, leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and more. Visit foxsportssupports.com for more information. We're all wearing their pins today, including down at the Hollywood Hotel, Chris and Michael. Thanks, Mike. We were just watching and observing uh, as we uh, are proud to wear these pins. Uh, Michael, I, I, I know certainly at a baseball game, a grounds crew, the umpires check beforehand. An NFL game, especially if it's a postseason game, they come out and make sure the field is playable. There aren't any conditions. Now, I know NASCAR gets the track ready for the weekend, but they do they do an overall inspection, not just cleaning the track, but checking the track the Sunday morning before after you've had a truck race Friday and a nationwide race Saturday. I think the inspection process starts as soon as that truck race is over on Friday night and again after the nationwide race on Saturday. There was some talk about some cracks down in the turn three and or one and two area that had maybe some tar had been put around those uh, cracks to try to hold it in place. And obviously it, that uh, fix failed. But now it looks like they're on top of it with this new uh, concrete. Yeah, well, they walk the track, but sometimes the naked eye doesn't see or feel things or a little movement wear and tear. I mean, we're how many 160 laps in helping to move some of that. Obviously, there ought to be a way to kind of at least double check before you're going to send cars out. Yeah, those inspection processes take place. But these cars, Chris, are faster than ever. And plus, we're running with the no ride height rule. So the teams are still struggling to make sure that that splitter stays right down on the road, but not hitting into the road. So there's a lot of variables that could cause that uh, the, the concrete to break apart. I'm sure that 
uh, they're expecting the rest of the track to make sure those are the only two areas that have been compromised. Yeah, and I was just on Twitter following, and Jeff Gordon said, hey, it's great that they repaired the track, but how long will it last? Obviously, he knows Martinsville, what happened, <laughs> Daytona. Is that in the back of, their, uh, back of their mind if you're a driver out here? It certainly is, and I'd be interested to hear what some of the other drivers think about what have happened. Maybe we can get a word from them. Yeah, let's uh, check in with Daryl upstairs, see who he's uh, dialing up. I'm going to go down to the Dollar General store and see if I can get a hold of Matt Kenseth. Hey, Matt Kenseth, it's a DW. Got a copy there, my friend. He's in the checkout aisle right now. Hold on, hold on. Hey, Matt, it's DW. You got a copy? Hold on, hold on. Try that one. Hey, Matt, DW, you got a copy? Yes, sir. Woo, I didn't think I was going to be able to get you. How's it going out there, brother? You started 19th. You're running second. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, so far so good. So right from the, the get-go, our Dollar General camera had pretty good, pretty good balance and was able to work our way toward the front. Had a couple great pit stops there. A little bit of a strategy to try to stay up here. So, uh, you know, I feel pretty good about it. We're still, uh, you know, we still got to get a little better to run with the 48 and the 4, I think. But we'll, uh, we'll keep working on it. Hopefully we can hang out up front here somewhere and uh, be in the mix at then. Yeah, it looked like yesterday afternoon late in practice, y'all did something to the car that really, uh, really uh, make, made it take off. Uh, what did y'all do to it to make it so fast? Uh, you'll have to ask the smart guys down there on top of the pit box. I'm not really sure, but, uh, yeah, I felt like we've made a lot of progress since we got here. We're out a little off on Friday. Obviously, uh, I didn't get the lap. Um, you know, we all wanted to qualify in there and, and kind of put us back here in the middle of the pack. So, uh, but since then, I thought we made some progress in race trim, and, um, you know, today I feel like we've been making some headway as well. All right, buddy, I know how it is when you're sitting still like that. Not a lot of air moving around, so I'm going to see if I can get NASCAR to get this thing going again for you. How's that? Well, I think you have some pulls, so see what you can do. Thanks. <laughs> All right, my friend. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. They're going to refire the cars here at Dover. We're going to check in with Lindsay Theory for a Samsung race break. Ready for the restart at lap 164. Now, Danica Patrick got the free pass. That moves her up to one lap down, and eight drivers who were multiple laps down took the wave around and did not stop under this caution. So Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth, a Chevy and a Toyota, will lead them to green. Then Denny Hamlin and Jeff Gordon, Kyle Larson and Jimmy Johnson, Paul Menard and Austin Dillon, Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr., the top ten of 22 cars on the lead lap. Nice crowd on hand. Green flag. When Harvick's got these restarts down pat, he can just jump out there and get a nice advantage. He chose the inside for this restart. Yeah, you know, I think he's experimenting, Mike. I think he's trying the inside, outside. He'll want to know what, uh, what works best if it comes late. Ken's a second. His teammate, Denny Hamlin, third. Whoa, something happened to Harvick. He's off pace. Flat tire. And another leader goes by the wayside. Everybody will cycle past Harvick up on the high groove, and he will limp to pit road. We stay green. Yeah, he should be able to make it to pit road this time because everyone has cleared him. Kevin Harvick getting down pit road and making the tire change will lose two to three laps. But what as a Matt Kenseth is the new leader. What a great catch on Harvick's part. I mean, he knew the tire was down. He didn't drive it in there and smash it into the wall. That was pretty smart. But when I look at these two Joe Gibbs Toyota drivers, just think about Matt Kenseth. Started back in the 19th position. Denny Hamlin less than 100 laps ago, speeding on pit road, had to go to the tail into the field. Yeah, I, I, I just, I was really happy for it to hear it. Uh, Denny Hamlin say, hey, we'll get it back. We got a good car. Let's don't panic. I like that. That's a good attitude. Let's go to Harvick's pit, Matt. And Aaron Kuna, a former tire specialist who moved up to the interior specialist this year on the four. He's looking over the tire and the carcass, trying to see if there's any kind of cuts and what might have cut down this right front tire on the four. Right now, he's also looking at the inner sidewall. Seventh place battle. Dale Earnhardt Jr. moves under Kurt Busch. And takes off after Paul Menard in sixth. 
Now, Kurt Busch in that 41 got some track position because he and Daniel Pinoz, his crew chief on that last caution, went with just right side tires, made up a lot of ground. Yeah, we'll see how that works out for that car. You've got to have a good handling car, I think, to try something like that. We'll see how it works out. Jimmy Johnson's 48 went to the high side in one and two and got a good run off the corner. He comes to within a car length of Hamlin as they enter three for second place. You heard Denny Hamlin having to backpedal, jump out of the throttle as he picked it up there on the exit of four. Yeah, that's, that's so, I mean, it's so hard to get off these corners with the pedal all the way to the floor. You do, it's not unusual to have to really work hard to get up off the corner. Sixth place, Dale Earnhardt Jr. challenging Menard into turn three, side by side, and Jr. will take the spot. Let's check with Matt. Mike, during that red flag strategy on the 88, multitasking, number one, keeping an eye on what those front five cars that took right side tires, what that'll mean later in the run, but more importantly, Junior has Steve Letard to send a crew member down the turns one and two with binoculars, just to report back as they go how that repair job is holding up because at Junior's eye level inside the race car, he does not have good vision of that repair job. There's a look at it on the left of your screen. That's the major area of repair. I'd say a lot of people are keeping an eye on that because uh, I know they did. Uh, they got the material to fix it with, but that's uh, still an area of a concern. Now, Jamie McMurray was the car that was damaged uh, there by the piece of concrete, but he is running competitive pace, even though he's a lap down. Jimmy Johnson's picked up a little trash on the grill, and Kevin Harvick, who made that unscheduled pit stop for a flat tire, Back on track, but two laps down. Yeah, it's hard. If you have a problem here, even if it's routine and you pin on the green, you're going to lose a lap and a good bit of the second lap. Now, to get to the free pass position, Jamie McMurray's going to have to move past Danica Patrick. She got the last free pass, but it moved her from two laps down to one lap down. If McMurray can pass the 10, the car directly in front of him, as we watch from Cliff Boyer's Toyota in-car cam, then McMurray would get the pass back to the lead lap next time the caution comes out. Yeah, Cliff Boyer in that 15 car, he is still on the lead lap. They've been make, making multiple pit stops. Remember the damage he received when he and Kyle Busch, the 18, got together. Well, you tell you, that 48 car, it won't be long till he'll be on the back bumper of Matt Kenson's 20 car. 48 is pretty fast right now compared to everybody else. And this is the best that Dale Jr. has been all day. You saw him pass Kyle Larson to move up into the top five. Riding with Jimmy Johnson. And the Lowe's camera shows Matt Kenseth just ahead, the race leader. The patch looks, looks okay for now. I'm not sure what that black is. I think that may have already been there from some of the sealer that was put in there before the thing came apart but the, so far so good Johnson to the high side again in one and two that'll give him a good run up off the corner and Kenseth gives him room on the outside and that and that's what you have to do when a guy's got to run on the outside you've got to give him a little bit of room or you'll slide right up into him it's a couple of the drivers that were battling toward the tail end of that Coke 600 last Sunday night at Charlotte. Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, and of course, pass, but, coming off the first two, please. Before last week, they both they needed wins. One's got one. The other guy in the yellow car needs one now. Now teams are keeping a close eye on that patched area in turn two, and so is Jeff Hammond. But everybody's certainly concerned. At least the only part of this uh, going back to green whether or not it's going to hold up. So far, so good, guys. Thanks. Looks pretty solid to me. Uh, that black that we see, that was sealer from where that the chunk was kind of being glued in place before it came out. So I think it looks pretty solid right now. She's got to go another 220 laps. We just completed lap 180. 20 laps to halfway. Here in Dover and Jimmy Johnson now in front of Matt Kenseth. He's pulled away by nine tenths of a second. Hamlin, Gordon, Earnhardt, the first five. 21 cars on the lead lap. And here's McMurray in that black Cessna Chevrolet. This is an important battle, not because it's for 22nd place, but because 
one of those three cars and A.J. Allmendinger's 47 to that mix as McMurray got sideways there. They all want to be in the free pass position, and they're going to fight hard to get there and stay there. Considering the damage on the one car, I'm very impressed with uh, how well it's running. I didn't know if he'd be able to keep pace or not, but it looks pretty good, actually. And here's the update from Kevin Harvick's pit. He had to stop because of a flat tire, and the crew said something knocked the valve stem out of the wheel, leading to sudden air loss. wonder what would have been that something. A piece of concrete, maybe? Could that have been possible? Because actually these wheels have valve stems a lot like a passenger car. They are a steel valve stem, a lot of them, but uh, put air in these tires the same way you would your passenger tire car. Normally when that happens, you make contact with somebody. Uh, somebody's fender or something will get up in there and rip it out of the wheel, but with debris on the track from that concrete, that would be my first thought. Nice run for Denny Hamlin. Jeff Gordon closing in, but Hamlin's light blue FedEx Toyota. Had a big down to his day. That's when he got caught speeding out of his pit during caution. But Steve, he's made a great rebound. He certainly has, Mike. And DW was talking about his positive attitude. He just said, this is the closest we have been all day. This car is not bad right now. Yeah, he's, he's being hounded right now by Jeff Gordon, who also has a very fast race car. Uh, Jeff trying to work around uh, Denny here. He gets a run on the bottom. Got a little... Action coming off turn four here with the two and the 14. Now these are both lead lap cars. Keselowski 15, Tony Stewart now 14. But Brad Keselowski, our post sitter, just one of the drivers that we've not talked a lot about today. It's like he had a fast race car for a single lap or two for qualified, but not at all for the long run. Krista? And really what's happened with Brad Kozlowski's car, he just started off so loose that he got a little bit behind. He really drifted back from the loose condition. On that first stop, they tried to tighten him up. They just had to continue to do that. On the last stop, they went with a track bar adjustment to try to give him more stability. Right now, he and Tony Stewart, they are battling for it just inside the top 15 for that 14th spot. It's got Luke Bryan on the hood, and when they introduced Kozlowski, uh, Luke rode around the racetrack in the pickup with him to wave to the fans. Maybe it'll bring him some luck today. Well, it's Hendrick Motorsports versus uh, Joe Gibbs Racing at the front of the field. All Hendrick cars in the top ten, as are two of Joe Gibbs. The other Kyle Busch is in the garage. I just think the Hendrick Chevrolet drivers, when this year started off, they were just a little bit behind with the rule package. I know Dale Earnhardt Jr. won the Daytona 500, but you think about it now, the first 10 races, that one win, and they've won the last two races with Jeff Gordon winning at Kansas. Of course, Jimmy Johnson went into Coke 600 last week at Charlotte. How about this fourth place battle, Daryl? These two guys have been going at it up, <laughs> upside, downside, any which way you can. Yeah, well, that's that's the fun thing about this racetrack. You get a run on a guy, you can get up under him, but it takes some cooperation here. We saw with the with the 15 car, you know, and the 18 car. you got to give a guy room on the outside if he gets that run on you. Right now, Junior is doing everything he can to get under the 11 car. And they're catching Jeff Gordon just ahead. Gordon getting into a little bit of traffic here. Yeah, I think that's the difference right now. The 20 car up there, Kansas, yellow car. He's in a little traffic. That's allowing Jeff Gordon to close up. And here comes the 11 of Hamlin and Jeff, Dale Jr. not far behind. Well, they're lapping past Josh Wise and J.J. Yaley. Denny Hamlin's FedEx bumper cam. Giving you these views. That's uh, the iRacing.com car of Josh Wise just ahead. Jimmy Johnson leading by two seconds. We're closing in on our Liberty Mutual mid-race report from Dover. The FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks is sponsored by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side by Pizza Hut. Make it great. And by Chevrolet. Find new roads.
It's time for the NASCAR on Fox Mid-Race Report from Dover, Delaware. Brought to you by Liberty Mutual. Hi, Chris Myers. Jimmy Johnson has the lead for the third time today. Now, he's led twice at the mid-race point prior to this season, but he didn't win either one of those. Of course, he won the Coca-Cola 600 last weekend. We have had two red flag delays, one for debris, one for the track coming apart. Darrell Waltrip, who are you keeping an eye on? You know, Chris, he had to make an engine change and start in the rear of, the, to, of this race, but Kyle Larson, the rookie, I am convinced that this young man is going to win a race before the year's over with. I'm going to keep an eye on him and see how he fares the rest of the way. I'll tell you who I'm going to look at, Casey Kane, a really fast car. And think about it, in the Coke 600, he hit the wall because of oil. Nothing to show for a good car there. In the All-Star race, he got caught up in pit road and had a problem as well. So this car's been fast week in and week out. But he hadn't shown the results. Today, Larry McReynolds, he gets some results. Michael, Jeff Gordon has four wins here at Dover. But the last time the victory lane, how about 13 years ago in 2001? But as we've seen a lot this year, throw the stat book away. His biggest motivation, he sees Jimmy Johnson right out that windshield. Matt Kansas, one of the drivers who just took two tires on the last stop. Who changed Jason Ratcliffe said, we are going to give you an adjustment next time in. Matt said, don't take too big a swing at it. We are very close. Another reason you know Matt has a good car, he hardly says a word on the radio. Crystal, let's not overlook Paul Menard. He's closing in on fifth place. He has Richard Childress Racing's only top five this season, a third at Las Vegas, and has six top ten finishes. Well, Mike, uh, Kevin Harvick went a couple laps down. He had dominated earlier in this race, had a stem problem affecting a flat tire. Of course, going for his third win of the season. And Kyle Busch, who led the first 81 laps, but crashed with Clint Boyer out of contention, ruining his chance for the weekend sweep. Moments ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. moved up to fourth as the leader remains Jimmy Johnson over Jeff Gordon and Matt Kenseth. This has been your NASCAR on Fox Mid-Race Report, brought to you by Liberty Mutual. We'll have more from Doug aware in a moment. Jimmy Johnson continues to lead. Here's a closer look at today's race action with Sprint. Biggest mover since the red flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr. up six positions to four. Draft off your family and save with the Sprint family plan. Get up to 10 of your friends and family together and you can all save at Sprint.com slash speed. Move Earnhardt up one more spot on your scoring rundown to third. Four seconds back of Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon, but it puts Hendrick Motorsports one, two, three with this pass of Matt Kenseth. Working that bottom, got a nice run right here. Sticks that nose under there, gets right up next to that left rear quarter panel, get a little air off of that thing, makes it move up the hill. Matt had to let him go. Now, on that restart, eight cars took wave arounds. None of them were on the lead lap, and all of them have since now made pit stops so they're off sequence with the 21 cars that remain on the lead lap all of whom were on pit road at lap 159. Let's get a little more on what happened to that tire that put Kevin Harvick now two laps down. Matt? Mike, after the four crew looked over that wheel, Greg Zipidelli, the competition director, also looked it over as well as Goodyear. Now you can see the stem, and then you can also see as Larry Mack circles, and then Larry will also circle the missing stem. Now what they were able to surmise, when that wheel went up on the hub, the crew members that changed the tires, they wear special cameras. They were able to back up that tape. They could see that inner stem was still on the wheel when they put the lugs on and the car left. Looking at the inside of the wheel, Greg Zepidelli told me it looked like some type of debris got inside the wheel due to all the scrapes and marks and knocked off that inner stem. Right now, just speculation what that could have been, but the end result is the four car is definitely back in the pack now. All right, the reason the wheel has two stems that attract this size, we run what we call a safety interliner. It's a tire within a tire, and you have to air the outer tire and the inner tire, and that inner tire carries about 12 to 25 PSI greater than what you run in the outer. So one of those stems got knocked off. That's the reason they basically had a flat tire. Yep, that inner tire is a safety liner. At these speeds, that certainly helps. Now, Jimmy Johnson is coming around to lead yet another lap at Dover Downs, or now Dover International Speedway. And that will make him the monster miles 
all time lap leader. 2,802 laps led here at Dover. Jimmy Johnson is not intimidated by Miles one bit. And that car that Miles is holding, that's a Toyota Camry, that's a full size car. That's how big that, uh, that that statue of Miles is. But you think about 2,800 laps. That's seven full races of laps led at this one mile race track. Well, how about eight wins? I mean, you know, the guy's just phenomenal here. Did I just say he was phenomenal here? I got to rethink that. He's phenomenal now, everywhere. everywhere. I want you to look right here at Jimmy's visor and the top of the headrest. And that's a pretty good place where you can see Jimmy come up as we go down to the straightaway and then that spinal that whole compression as you go down into the corner yeah and car in the wall turn one that's alex bowman again oh gosh is that matt kenseth Whoa. squeaks by my gosh kenseth barely got through there caution is out lap 222 fifth caution flag of the day boy i guarantee you matt kenseth was drawing up in the seat of his race car that was close that's another hard hit for the rookie. And we were closing in on about probably eight to 12 laps from what were going to be green flag pit stops for all our leaders. Well, you saw the tire come apart just before he hit the wall. You know, Matt had to be thinking that that 23 was going to come down the racetrack and he went to the outside. Uh, 23 never came down the racetrack, kind of stayed up there. Whoa, that is close, buddy. Really close. Matt had to think that because he had damage, he would look at it, he got his tires locked up. You see the black marks sliding the wheels. Oh, my right there. Matt's thinking, man, I just threw this day away. Well, there were still cars coming on the inside, so Alex Bowman didn't want to slide down there in front of traffic. Exactly. But, wow. It roads open, Matt. Leader Jimmy Johnson's in now. Johnson's in the car. Just got looser and looser, especially the last 10 laps or so before the caution. Four tires, a last stop, four the same here. You can also see they're going to make a chassis adjustment. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr. says he needs more grip on late exit of the corner, Steve. Well, Matt, Jeff Gordon said the same thing as his teammate Jimmy Johnson. He said the car had really gone away the last few laps. So this caution flag, good timing. Four tires for Jeff Gordon, Krista. Crew Chief Jason Radcliffe timing his driver, Matt Kenseth, into his pit stall. Remember, Matt, one of the drivers who took two tires on the last stop. The team comes around to make it a four-tire change. They also give him a slight adjustment. Matt knew he needed something, but he didn't want to change the balance of the car too much. Jimmy Johnson. First in your Sunoco race off pit road, all four tire changes. Casey Kane, nice pickup. Good stop for him, and uh, Denny Hamlin loses a couple of spots. They don't have anything for that guy, though. He is beating him in pits and on the track. The FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks is sponsored by FedEx. FedEx one rate, simple flat rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. By Sprint, get the HTC One M8 Harman Kardon Edition, exclusive from Sprint. And by Subway, the official training restaurant of Carl Edwards and athletes everywhere. All the statistics you ever wanted to know come right out of that seat and those computers. All right, let's take a look at pit road comparison here. Okay, now this is the driver time between Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. You can see right there, Jimmy Johnson about a second better. Little bit of difference in the crew, but the real difference is in the driver. You can see right there, two second difference. But I don't think it's because Jeff Gordon is worse on pit road than Jimmy Johnson. I think it has to do with pit selection. Pit selection is based on qualifying. Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals qualified fourth. They have this very first pit box going in. Jimmy Johnson just has to drive right in. He doesn't have to look for his pit box. Jeff Gordon and Alan Gustafson, they qualified six. He's halfway down pit road. Even though he has an opening in front of him, he still has to look for his pit box. He has to worry about getting in and out, plus watching for pit road speed. Earlier in the race, Jeff Gordon's sponsor, Eddie DeHunt, discussed just that dilemma. Jimmy and Harvick and them first two stalls, they get out of there with pretty good speed line. Yeah, I pushed it on that last time out. It's going to be tight all day. They're getting a good run out of those two boxes. We're going to be racing both of them for the win. 
All right, Eddie's wallet isn't that deep. He's Jeff Spotter, <laughs> yeah, not his exactly. sponsor. I'm sorry. Where do you think he's from? <laughs> I told you, Long Island. <laughs> but to his point, one Jimmy Johnson, once his stop is done, all he has to worry about is getting down pit road and not speed leaving. Spotter's high on the roof. To our left, coming out of turn number four as the green flag waves. And Jimmy Johnson gets a jump. It's three Hendrick Chevys fighting for the front spot. And another Hendrick Chevy driver not far behind, Casey Kane in that blue number five back there just outside the top five and six. On the outside comes Matt Kenseth in the number 20 and the 27 of Paul Boy, Menard. Kenseth has got to run. Couldn't quite get up to Jeff Gordon, but man, he had to run through the middle of the corner. That 20 car going to run over Jeff Gordon here in a second. Boy, Casey Kane in that five, he has been working his guts out since the restart, trying to get that fifth spot away from Paul Menard in that 27. Look at Kyle Larson in 42. There you talked about him. Back of the field to start this race. He's done a great job. Uh, uh, the kid just has a lot of, he's got a lot of skill for a, for a rookie, and uh, he does a wonderful, he just does a great job. Kenny Hamlin moving past Kyle Larson. That's for seventh place. And now Dale Jr. underneath Matt Kenseth trying to take away third, not that time. Matt Yoakum. An update on the 42 of Kyle Larson. What a run they've had the last nine races, five top tens. He had to go to the back, like Larry Mack mentioned, due to an oil leak that they could not diagnose. They had to make the engine change. The car has been on the tight side much of the race, Steve Burns. A slight air pressure change on the last stop. But Steve, where it really paid off was the gamble that Kurt Busch and his team made on that cost at lap 159, getting the track position and just changing two right side tires. Whew. I, don't, I had to catch my breath there for a second. I don't know what happened down there in one and two, but there was a big jam up all at once. Danica Patrick in her 10 car running in the 25th spot right now. She's two laps down racing four of the drivers that are two laps down. Right behind her, Justin Allgaier is three down. Uh, the rookie had a little bit of that skirmish that took Ricky Stenhouse and Greg Biffle out of the race. Biffle hoped to return, but they have not. Kozlowski on the outside now of Kurt Busch. It's like that two car may be coming alive. Uh, Luke Bryant's waking up, ready to get going here. You can bid on auction items from Kurt Busch's double, the Indy Charlotte double last week. To benefit the Armed Forces Foundation, go to charitybuzz.com slash Armed Forces Foundation to participate. In Kurt Busch and his 41 team, I know they have that win at Martinsville, but, but they have to stop the bleeding. They only have two top 20 finishes this year. A couple of Fords fighting for 12th place. Joey Logano inside of Eric Almirola. And that settles out for the moment. And now Greg Biffle returns to the race 101 laps down, but trying to extend that string of running at the finish of 84 straight races, which is a NASCAR record, eclipsing that of Herman the Turtle Beam, who was running at the finish of over 80 races, though not consecutive, as Biffle's record is. He doesn't like something. Plus, NASCAR, especially at this place, they're going to make make sure he maintains a minimum speed. Yeah, it's around 26 seconds. I think 26.02 is minimum speed. Now you can't get out of the way at this track, can you, Daryl? No, and that's what <laughs> Biffle's trying to do. He's trying to find a place where he can get up to speed here without being anybody's way. Feel that thing out a little bit. Now, during our Liberty Mutual mid-race report, we mentioned Paul Menard, who has... Snuck up into the top five on that restart, Krista. Yeah, Paul Menard having a great day. He started 15th. He's currently up into the top five. One of the reasons, just solid work by crew chief Slugger Lavi. Slugger continues to work at the car. Last stop, made a slight wedge adjustment to help Paul out. There's the main native, hard at work. 
Well, Mike, you talked about him at our race break, and he's never even had a top five finish at this track. I know we talk about this every year, Larry, but that 27 car for the first half of the year is as good as there is out there most every week. They just need to figure out, figure out how to close the deal. Now, Jamie McMurray, we saw him pass Danica Patrick and A.J. Allmendinger to win the battle. Trouble back straight away. Yaley. J.J. Yaley. Fires out. Fire. That's the caution Jamie McMurray needed, though, Mike, right there. It will put him back on the lead lap. Uh, we said he had passed those other cars, but just prior to the last caution coming out, race leader Jimmy Johnson lapped Michael Annette, so Annette got the free pass. I, I am totally impressed with the work they did on that one car. Um, Keith Rod and Annette group, they didn't panic. They got it fixed up, and the car is fast. Yeah, he's been running competitive lap times. Now, you'll see J.J. Yaley's 44. Multiple laps down in 33rd place. A lot of day ending smoke there for the former sprint car driver from Phoenix. And when they do open pit road, these drivers, they only have 12 laps on their tires. I think they're going to come to pit road, but I think like the last time we had a short run, we'll see a lot of right side tires only. That's where Jimmy Johnson has to be careful. If they elect to take four, they're on the four turn end of the track, and the other guys take two, getting a little traffic. Larry, they were last in just 17 laps ago. Would anybody stay out? Well, I don't know. It's, that's that's a lot. I think you still in there. As you can see, Jimmy Johnson brings a whole group in. Matt Yoakum. And Larry Mack, Jimmy Johnson was telling Chad Knauss the car was good on that run. He liked the balance. Good work going on the right side. You're going to see two tires here on the 48. Meanwhile, the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. said the track is changing more rubber down. Right sides for him as well. Steve Burns. Same call for the 24, Matt. Just right side, uh, right side tires. Jeff Gordon saying the car gets a little tight when it takes off. Small chassis adjustment as well, Krista. Steve, same situation for Matt Kenseth. Right sides is the call. He has a tight race car on restarts, but he said after 17 laps, it was starting to come in. And as Eddie DeHunt described, whoa, whoa, three wide and a bit of a collision. I think Paul Menard got the right front knocked in there. Some body slamming going on there. The 88 car, 20 car, they all just came together as a, the 20 came out of his pit. You can see about all the top 10 drivers changing just right side tires. I'm saying as they dropped the jack on Jeff Gordon's car, Jimmy Johnson was already passing Gordon's pit. And once again, Johnson gets out first. Off the road, gentlemen. Right here, bud. Keep on coming. 24 will be peeling off soon. Keep coming. Five away for three, two, one, four tires. Ready? Be ready. Be ready. Five away. Be ready. Be ready. I want you to go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Go hard. One, 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 one. Come on, one, 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 one. Ding, 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 ding. Good stop, guys. 157 laps to go. You're inside one of the NASCAR on Fox production trucks. Did your high-end stereo have that many slide pots and rheostats and meters? And the man at that keyboard is Fred Aldis from Phoenix. Hi, Freddie. What you don't see are the 22 Emmy Awards for bringing sounds of the game to Fox and particularly here to NASCAR on Fox. <laughs> uh, this is his last race with NASCAR on Fox. Freddie, enjoy your retirement and mentoring. It's been just so great to have you as a big part of our team. Did you see that little grin come on his face when you mentioned those? <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs> you should hear the music he plays us during commercial oh, to goodness. keep us up on the wheel. Oh, goodness. We have a lot of fun. Now, one thing Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers did right there with their four car, he's been fighting being two laps down with only 12 laps on their tires they were one of several drivers to take the wave around that now puts him at the back of the field one lap down that, that they, that's the only move they really had yeah that's just, it. we're getting late in this race they got to do it late because i've been watching him he's not going to drive those laps up he's got a great car not but you're not going to go up there and pass jimmy johnson jeff Gordon. some of these guys are running really good too 21 lead lap cars, including Jamie McMurray, just got back on the lead lap. Green flag, Johnson inside, Gordon outside, then Earnhardt, Kenseth, and Menard. It doesn't seem to matter where Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car restarts, on the bottom or up top. He just gets such a launch. One and two down the back stretch. Here comes Kenseth on the outside, and whoa, Hamlin way on the inside. Almost took Menard out in turn four. That was a bold move. 
Yeah, Matt Kitchens around the outside or trying to go around the outside of Jeff Gordon here. You think he's going to make it. Jeff's going to give him a little bit of room. Kitchens by Gordon in the second. Don't look too far by it. 88 right behind him. And look who's in the fifth place. That's Kyle Larson. The rookie trying to make some noise. With his Ganassi Chevrolet. Then Menard, Keslowski, Hamlin. Got a car bouncing off the wall here on the front straightaway. The 34, David Reagan got forced into the wall. He keeps going, but a lot of tire smoke. You're looking up at Brad Keselowski in that two. I think every stop they've made that car better and better for him. They had some work to do. 34 is on the head coming pit road. He knocked the heck out of the wall here. Right side damage for Reagan. Yeah, he was two laps down running back in the 31st position. Sixth place. Brad Keselowski goes after Paul Menard. Takes the spot. Here comes Hamlin. Wants to follow right through. Boy, they have made that two car. After struggling through the middle part of this race, they have made that two car a, a lot, lot better. A lot like it was when the race started. And it seems like Menard's car, Darrell, has gone the other way after this stop. Tony Stewart moving up now. He's to the inside of Kurt Busch. The teammates again fighting side by side. And Stewart will move up and take over 10. You know, and it's a good day for Kurt Busch. Uh, that team is running. That's about the best I've seen them run. All and for a number of races, really, since Martinsville. You know, we talked to Tony Stewart in our race day pre-race show, and here's Ryan Newman. Remember, at the beginning of the race in that 31 car, he was about to go a lap down, just about hit the wall at the start of the race, and here he's fighting his way, trying to get toward the top 10. I think that just tells you some drivers, you know, they, they know where this track's going to be halfway through it and how they want their car to feel even in the beginning. It may not be like you want it, but it's going to come to you. The track's going to come to you. Everything's going to work in your favor. Newman's moved up into 12th. Behind him, Al Marola, Truex, Dillon, Ambrose, and Canyon. I was talking about Tony Stewart in the 14 car. He really caught me off guard in the media center Friday. He said, I really had hoped by now to be back 100% health-wise. He said, I thought I would be done with all the rehabilitation, but obviously he's still not there, but you'd never know it watching him on the race. No, the best thing that happened to Tony Stewart this week, he got to get back in that sprint car. And I'm telling you, that's like getting back on a horse that threw you. And I think it did a lot for his confidence. I watched him get in his car. He's getting in that car a lot smoother and easier than he was earlier in the year. He may not be 100%, but I'll take an 85% Tony Stewart any day. He's going to move up into eighth place, passing Paul Menard. Stewart closing. David Reagan came back on track and had to return the pits, uh, still with a tire rub. Yeah, quite a, quite a bit of smoke was continuing to come out of that car, so good thing he brought it to pit road. Brad Keselowski in that too. He has his set sight on Kyle Larson in the 42, trying to get to the top five. And like Paul Menard is falling back now at 27, and Tony Stewart, even with damage on the right side, at 14 just keeps going toward the front. He takes that spot away from Paul Menard. Now it's Keselowski moving up, passing Kyle Larson and Krista. Brad's back in the top five. Yeah, and really this all goes back, Mike, to the adjustment they made on the first stop. Paul Wolf took a really big back bar and wedge adjustment. Uh, that was by the request of his driver, Brad, Brad Keselowski, saying, I need more of everything. And then the car got better. It was just over-rotating the center, but it's so good that on the last stop, other than those two right-side tires, there were no adjustments made on that car. And just looking at his lap times outside of our leader, Jimmy Johnson, he's running about the second quickest laps on the track right now. Yeah, this car now looks like it did when this race started. Of course, Brad jumped out there and led a few laps, and the car just went away on him, and it's taken him this long to get it adjusted back up for him. But now he's uh, on the move. David Reagan took his car to the garage where he'll join J.J. Yaley, Alex Bowman, Ricky Stenhouse, Kyle Busch, and Brian Vickers. David Stremme and Greg Biffle spent a lot of time in the garage but are back out on track. So 38 of 43 starters still running as Denny Hamlin makes the pass on Kyle Larson. Sixth place now for Hamlin. You know, that, that 42 car, Kyle Larson, he likes new tires. I think about several races where he would run up in the top four or five for 20, 30 laps. But 
seem like when the tires go away a little bit, it really affects him more than some others. So uh, he likes new tires. He's good for the short run. Kurt Busch hanging just outside the top 10 in 11th place. We listen. I think we're probably going to pop a race cut tire. It's already vibrating. Oh, boy. Darrell, the right front tire here, it never gets a break. Even on the straightaways because of the way the car is always loaded. That right front tire, again, it's like a blade. Why do you think the racetrack tore up? These tires, I mean, they dig into that racetrack. I, I know myself, you wide open through one of these corners, and you think, and every now and then you'll think about, boy, the pressure on that right front tire. Don't think about that. <laughs> uh, Jeff Gordon took second away from Matt Kenseth. Jimmy Johnson's lead now over his Hendrick Chevrolet teammate, 2.4 seconds. Gordon a little quicker right now as Johnson deals with race traffic. And Mike, every driver has a little, uh, he has a, every driver has a voice inside of him. And, and, and you fight, you argue with that voice all the time. That right front tire, something wrong with that right front tire, I'll shut up and drive the car. I mean, you have an argument with yourself when you think there's something going on. It's amazing. And then when something happens, you say, I knew I should have listened to that little voice. Joey Logano trying to move into seventh past Larson, who gets a good run off the corner and holds him off. Wow, did you see Larson's car bounce up and down <laughs> entering it. that corner oh my on the gosh. high side? And 15th oh. place, that's Boyer and Dillon. A little contact looks like they're almost between uh, Logano and Larson as they came off turn four. But Darrell, when I look at Clint Boyer in that 15 car sitting there running in the 15th spot as we see this battle continue between Kyle Larson, Joy Logano, Tony Stewart, he's one of the cars that changed four tires. They're not going anywhere. Krista? Mike, for Joey Logano, the runs have really been broken down into about 20 lap sessions. He said his car gets tight for 20 laps, then comes in and then tightens back up. On the last stop, they two took two right side tires. He said he needs front grip in the center, rear grip on entry. Seventh place for Logano. Clint Boyer. As Kurt Busch has come to pit road to resolve that tire problem on his Haas CMC Chevy. So this will take him off the lead lap and likely he'll come back out two laps down, Steve. Yeah, Mike, they're going to try and ride it out. In fact, Kurt had just told them the lap before to add a wheel spacer, but then all of a sudden he said, I have got to come to pit road. So there he is to take four tires. Well, you don't want to lose a right front tire anywhere, but if there's one place Ooh. you do not want to blow a right front tire, it'd be at this place here. That's what I was going to tell Mike. I didn't listen to that voice very often until I had something happen, and I said, oh, my, maybe I should have listened to that little guy. Jimmy Johnson today trying once again to prove that he is the master of the Monster Mile. At Dover International Speedway, Jimmy Johnson's lead is two seconds over his teammate Jeff Gordon with 125 laps to go. And at least one more pit stop in the offing before we get to the end of the FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks. Johnson didn't win until just last weekend, and he talked with Daryl about his slow start to the season. When we got into December, there were some open test sessions for the 2014 rules package. Rules weren't clear yet. Uh, we just came off of a very long stretch. The championship, I actually had a hernia surgery that I had to go in for. Really? Yep, just normal thing. Just carrying all them trophies, man. Carrying all those trophies. Well, that all played into the Charlotte test session. So now we're behind a test session. We try to go to Nashville two or three times. We get snowed out. We get rained out. So as the season started, we were just behind. Wow, they sure caught up in a hurry. Yeah, I mean, he and Chad Knauss both, they have said that a lot during the first part of the season, that uh, there was just no focus on 14 until the checker flag waved at Homestead. Remember what Chad Knauss told us way back in March, April, maybe. Look, don't get too upset or worried about us till we get to May. If we're not straightened out by May, then we got a problem. But we think by May we'll be good to go. What they could get upset about is that 24. Consistently over the last 20 laps, aside from traffic, 
Jeff Gordon's laps have been quicker than Jimmy Johnson's. They know they can't beat Johnson on pit road. They've seen that time after time today. They're going to have to catch and beat him on the racetrack. And then you wonder how much chasing that championship last year took a toll on Matt Kenseth at 20. And this checkered flag waves today. We're halfway through the race to the chase, and the driver that won seven races last year still winless this year. This is the guy you talk about. He better keep an eye on that 24. This two car has come alive. Brett Keselowski has passed. He just got around Dale Jr., and he's closing up on the back of, uh, of Matt Kenseth. So the two car looks to me like he's got the best car right now. Denny Hamlin, Hamlin overcame a speeding penalty to fight his way back up into the top five, currently in sixth place, six seconds back. And Mike, just to verify that, the two car just ran a 24-11, and the Johnson just ran a 24-10, so they're nip and tuck right now on lap times. Joey Logano in seventh place, both the Penske cars in the top seven, both of those Fords. And there's a look back at Tony Stewart in eighth. Yeah, the one-year anniversary from his last win, 15 consecutive seasons, he's went with winning at least one race every single year. And remember, he didn't get the race here last fall. So he, he didn't get the opportunity to race here last fall. So the last time Tony Stewart raced here, he won. Rookie Kyle Larson from the back to ninth place. Nice drive for Chip Ganassi's first-year driver. Little slide right there. And we're riding with Clint Boyer in his 15 car. Of all the drivers that elected to change four tires under that last caution, he's the one, only one that's really made it work because he's the only driver in the top 10 that changed four tires that last stop. Looks pretty comfortable, not fighting the wheel too much. Car looks like it's handling real well for him right now. Now, Paul Menard was in the top five, but on that last pit stop, Whatever adjustments were made uh, found him unable to hold position, and he slid back to 11th right in front of his Richard Childress teammate, Ryan Newman. It's kind of the downside of taking two and four. You know, if you take two uh, and the guy takes four, he might start out behind you, but as the runs go on, those four tires, they become bigger and bigger. Mayetta, New Jersey, about 70 miles to the northeast of Dover. Makes this the home track for Martin Truex. He has won here. He's currently 13th. We were talking about the other two Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet drivers. Here's the third one, Austin Dillon. Right now, he's in the 14th position. We talked about it in the pre-race, Daryl. The one thing about Austin Dillon, which is what a rookie needs to do, he has completed all but six laps of competition the first 12 races. Right in there with the best of them. Carl Edwards has uh, finished most of the laps. I think uh, Ryan Newman has. Childress is far as haven't been as fast as some, but they've been very dependable. Eric Almirola, who started 23rd, running 15th right now. And Richard Petty's four. His teammate two spots back. And around goes Allgaier. He was trying to get on pit road, Mike. He came down off the racetrack just a little too fast. We see that happen here quite often. We're going to stay green. See a bit of uh, stay dry down there. But there you're trying to transition after 24 degrees of banking onto a very slick apron. Yeah, you watch him right here. You can see him. He's trying to get it woed up, trying to get it woed up. Oh, he got a lot. He got hard on the brakes. Woo! Did you see those rear wheels? He got the rear wheels locked up, started wheel hopping, and it spun him out. Yeah, the entrance to pit road and the commit cone, which is that orange spot, it's almost before you really get the turn for him. Man, that was that was mighty close. But he will continue, and we will stay green. Meanwhile, Kurt Busch has been very local about his pit crew. We'll get to him in a moment, as here is Carl Edwards, who gridded, qualified 29th, actually started 27th as two cars went to the rear. He's been up about as high as 12th today. Currently running in the 18th spot, but still on the lead lap. You want to see what push and loose it looks like. See how much he had to wheel turn left. And about the time that thing comes up out of the corner, it snaps around to the back. And he has to correct it. It's a, This is called pushing and loose. Push, push. 
Casey Kane in this five. He was running up there close to his three teammates of the Hendrick Chevrolet camp, which is all in the top five right now. But they elected to change four tires, and now he's within a couple of seconds of going a lap down to his teammate Jimmy Johnson. Now, those are all the lead lap cars, 19 of them. In 20th is the Bud Chevy for Kevin Harvick. He is one lap down, but the danger for Harvick is Jimmy Johnson is starting to catch traffic again. And uh, if he laps Casey Kane or Carl Edwards, that'll take Harvick out of the free pass position. The other driver I want to mention is Kurt Busch. Kurt has been very vocal about difficulties with his pit crew, and it's been confirmed that Kurt was right. There was a loose wheel on his car. So, Darrell, that little voice in his head telling him to come to pit road, that was the one to listen to. Good thing he listened to it today. Jimmy Johnson, 2.3 seconds ahead of Jeff Gordon, Matt. Mike, several restarts ago, Jimmy Johnson had Chad Knauss, and he think that the preferred lane on the restarts had migrated to the bottom. Chad had the stats backed up with Jimmy Foster, and then Jimmy has been restarting on the bottom. Also, he said that moments ago, this is the best the race car has been all day. The adjustments they made continue in that order. Also, Chad Knauss is spotted by, if you get the opportunity, if it presents itself, try to save me a little bit of fuel. <laughs> that's that's the last thing a crew chief always tells you. Oh, by the way. Hate those the, old, by the way. Probably the last thing the driver wants to hear. You don't want to hear that, man. I'm doing my thing. Leave me alone. As long as we can on this fuel run. When you feel it's time to pit, I need you to go one lap longer. If you feel you need to do it on the back stretch. Bobby. Well, and the reason they're starting to talk about this is all these drivers pitted on lap 241. If they can go 75 laps, that will take them to lap 316. That right there, you're, you're starting to flirt with being able to make it to the end. So they want to run this run just as long as they can, but you know how much tires are worth. But I've been watching this battle here with Matt Kenseth in the 20, Brad Keselowski in the two. This is a battle for third. Keselowski beats Kenseth getting in the corner, but as you see right there, Kenseth pulls him on the exit of the corner. Yeah, Matt's been real good off the corner all day, and uh, Brad is really, I mean, that's how hard Brad is driving right now. Keselowski in the two, I've been watching him. He has been charging 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 he's finally got his car where he wants it he's trying to make up a lot of that ground that he lost and he's doing it yeah i think if we get to these green flag pit stops it will be a bit of a cat and mouse game of drivers knowing they want four fresh tires or knowing you might can do this on one more stop and just like we saw with kevin Hart, anybody that has trouble kurt bush you stop under green you're going to lose two laps david gilliland on the outside And Keselowski again, once the bottom lane opens, there he goes, and he makes the pass. Yeah, he isn't waiting on anybody. I'm telling you, he's on a mission. The low fuel lights starting to come on for Kevin Harvick. Remember, he took the wave around on the last caution. He's going to need a stop soon. 101 laps to go in Dover. Huh. Kevin Harvick has made the stop for fuel, Matt. And Mike, they've already made the chassis adjustment to try to free up Harvick's four car. Slow on the right side. Remember, the past two weeks in Charlotte, they've had issues on pit stops, costing them the wins, and he's away. That will leave him at least three laps down, while the leaders are not due on pit road for another, what, Larry, 20 laps? About 15 to 20 laps. Uh, and, and Kevin Harvick that time ran 81 laps. That's what some of these leaders are going to have to try to do this round of pit stops to maybe make it to the end. You know, Mike, one thing with Kevin Harvick, it, it's one thing to have a problem and complain a little bit about it, but it's something else when you complain about it every week and nothing gets changed, nothing gets done. And I don't know what they're doing, but Kevin is obviously, a, they got some work to do in the pits and they have it every week. Looks like in turn two, uh, that Quick Rock has not only done its job, it is cured, sealed, and good to go. So uh, high marks to the NASCAR and Dover International Speedway safety crews for making very quick work of that concrete repair and getting us back in under green. Yeah, Mike, it's been about 150 laps since that patch was put in there. Yeah, it's signed, sealed, and delivered. Good job. 
Jimmy Johnson has led over 100 laps at Dover in 13 races, including 10 of the last 11. Looking for his ninth victory here. He has eight here and eight at Martinsville. His lead over Jeff Gordon has stayed pretty constant, right about two and a half to two and three quarter seconds. Not much variance there. Yeah, if you sit on the pit box down there, you're a crew chief, and you're looking at a stopwatch or the computer screen like we are, you got to be shaking your head. How does he do it? How does he run that much faster than everybody else? I mean, he is a, you know, a tenth or two good almost every lap. And Daryl, he and Chad Canals are able to do it with all types of different cars, different rule packages. It just does not seem to matter. I know the racetrack is a constant, but a lot of different changes for them over the course of the races they've won here. Yep. They have lapped their teammate, Casey Kane. Uh, Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon have. So Kane, right now, the only car one lap down is in the free pass position. Everybody else is two or more laps down. Casey Mears and Kurt Busch down two. Danica Patrick, David Gilliland, Almendinger, and Harvick, three laps down. Yeah, we've got a number of drivers like Carl Edwards, Jamie McMurray. They would so much love to see a caution because that leader, Jimmy Johnson, is not far behind them. Larry, if you can go 80 laps on a tank of fuel for this run and the next one, which is on the outer edge of the fuel window, you could come to the finish line with one lap of gas to spare. And if we do stay green, that's about the scenario it's going to be. I think what these drivers would love to do, you heard Chad Knauss and Jimmy Nup Johnson talking about it, if they could go 10 more laps to lap 320, I think that makes them feel a little bit of a comfort level. Remember, that would be 80 green flag laps. We've had a few cautions in this last run. You want to see what it feels like? The banking feels like we saw the compression in the seat with Jimmy Johnson, how you go up and down. Well, this tells you why right here. I mean, this thing, watch, it never straightens all the way up. That's nine degrees down the straightaway, right into the corner, and right there is when you're totally compressed. And now the car comes up out of the corner, and as that angle changes, the back of the car gets light right there. That's where you hear the wheel spin sometimes. And, Darrell, you can see with the steering, because of the nine degrees of banking, he actually has to turn it right to keep it straight on the bank. Yeah, you have to hold the car, what we call, up in the racetrack going down the straightaway here. Jamie McMurray fighting to stay on the lead lap as Jimmy Johnson closes in. And that will leave 17 cars on the lead lap when Johnson completes the pass. Now back at lap 158. Ryan Newman's 31 flew up a piece of concrete, pulled up that loose piece of concrete. Jamie McMurray pulverized it, which is what that concrete did to his splitter. Keith Rodden's crew did a great job of getting McMurray back out on track and losing maybe a couple of tenths of a second per lap. That next piece hit, bounced off Casey Mears' car. But McMurray has rebounded nicely, and Austin Dillon may be out yeah. of fuel. No, either he's out of fuel or you, he came by here, the engine didn't sound right. It could be out of fuel. But I, I'm not sure if it's worse than that. And we're hearing that he did say fuel on the radio. Yeah. So, again, probably trying to go another five laps. This is the longest green flag stretch that we've had today. Martin Truex is on pit road. So is Casey Mears. When one guy runs out of gas and you're on the same strategy he is or same lap he is, you get nervous. Casey Mears, Austin Dillon, Martin Trex Jr., all their engines are built by the ECRs, those Chevrolet engines. Josh Wise is in, and so is the 42 of Kyle Larson. Matt? Larson been saying the car tight from the center to exit. Going to try to free him up with a chassis adjustment. Meanwhile, the 14 of Tony Stewart, last year's winner, on pit road for what they're hoping is their final stop. The car was tight to the center, but then it would snap loose on exit. That's been his biggest issue the last half of the race. 43, Eric Almirola is also on pit road. He's been flirting with the top 10. His car just a tick on the tight side much of the last run. They're having a push start, Austin Dillon. Trying to bump and run that car. 
There you know it's funny. Oh. This a point right here, this pit stop. You could win it now, you could lose it now. I mean, we're sitting right here on the fence. Ryan Newman is in, so is Marcus Ambrose. Krista. Ryan Newman just coming on the radio as he came into pit road and said the transmission is stuck. Can't get it out of gear. The transmission is stuck for the 31. Josh Wise and Austin Dillon too fast entering. They'll have to do a drive through penalty as Paul Menard brings his Chevy to pit road. Yeah, the three had no engine. No, he was out of gas. So his engine wasn't running. His tack wasn't working. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming down off the banking along with Clint Boyer Keselowski. and Denny Hamlin. Joey Logano in and Brad Keselowski. Keselowski was on it, man. He had all four tires smoking. Matt? Mike Skeetletart wanted to get the lap 321. They've done that. They're going to pack it full of fuel. Steve Letart told him, wait on me so we can make sure we can pack full. You can see the fuel, man. Steve says they're full. Denny Hamlet says that his car has gotten tight on this run. Four tires fuel, and they will also make an air pressure adjustment for Denny Hamlet. Krista. Brad Keselowski is in. That's a new front changer, Hunter Masling. They had the loose wheel last week. They took action and made a change. Brad Keselowski saying his car is just a little free. Carl Edwards and Jeff Gordon coming to the pit lane along with Casey Kane and Austin Dillon to serve his penalty. Steve? And Mike, his spotter, Eddie DeHaan, telling him not to speed on pit road. Jeff Gordon saying, I just need this car to cut a little bit better in the center. Don't take four tires and make a chassis adjustment, Matt. Jimmy Johnson's won five of the last ten races here. Gover slides to a stop. Solid on the right side coming around to complete the stop. They're going to make a chassis adjustment. Jimmy said the car has been the best this past run that it has been all day. Significant change for what they hope is the final run. Matt Kenseth now in. Kenseth picked up the lead when Johnson pitted. And now he comes to pit lane one lap later. Ryan Newman is back in the pits. Krista. And this was the plan for Matt Kenseth. He had been saving fuel this entire run. They were able to go one lap favorite track there is nowhere more than you'd rather get that first win four tire change matt saying his car so good on the exit he just needs a little bit more on entry frank biffle 100 laps down comes to pit road and danica patrick comes in she was too fast entering and exiting um that's two speeding violations but only one penalty yeah i think anybody that could go over 320 laps right here some of them with 321 322 323 that gives you a little cushion to get to the end. Yeah, as far as drivers I feel good about that they can make it to the end, one of them is Jimmy Johnson in that 48 because he pitted with 77 laps to go. I feel like his teammate Jeff Gordon, who pitted with 78 to go, is in pretty good shape, as well as Matt Kenseth. The drivers I'm a little concerned about, one that normally goes a long way on fuel, would be Brad Keselowski in that two because they pitted that car with 80 laps to go. That means they have to have run 80 green flag laps should we stay caution free. Ryan Newman has taken his car to the garage with transmission failure. Seventy five laps to go. Will it be a fuel mileage marathon or will we see perhaps one more caution flag? Sixty nine laps to go at Dover. Jimmy Johnson leading by five seconds. Here's your FedEx race summary. Now just 13 cars on the lead lap. 13 lead changes among four drivers and six caution periods for 33 laps and two red flag delays. Before pit stops Jimmy Johnson's lead was 3.1 seconds over Jeff Gordon. After pit stops, Brad Kozlowski five seconds back, and Jeff Gordon now 7.4. It's been an ongoing battle right here between uh, Moyer and, and uh, Dale Jr. They've been fighting back and forth here. Moyer's been able to hold him off so far. And you just hear those cars go off in the corner, you hear that engine kind of the thing transitions down through those bumps. You hear the engine kind of rev up. And, Change sounds. 
Tony Stewart has snuck into the top five. He did it by gaining four positions on that pit stop. But what helped him, he pitted much earlier than these drivers. He pitted at lap 317, where a lot of drivers he's racing around didn't pit the lap 322, 323. But what that tells me, it would be a stretch for Tony Stewart to make it to the end without stopping on Sunoco race fuel. How about the 24 in front of him, Steve? It's not good right now. Yeah, he's there, dropped he's, back to seven and a half seconds off the lead. Yeah, he's about to lose a spot to Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon's turning that steering wheel, and it's just going straight. Yeah, and, and I know, and I'm sure he's, oh, goodness gracious. That, that was, was almost, close. That was almost a disaster. And Smoke is going to make it even tougher for him. He's working on him now. Three wide with Casey Mears up top, and Stewart forges ahead and into third. Here's Jeff Hammond. been talking about the 48 the drive off the center of the corner is incredible and so far that 14 looks like he's found that same magic groove just like he did last year to be able to go on and win this race another car that i've been watching that looks like he's all of a sudden got that set up working pretty good is the 88 of dale Earnhardt jr i know that jimmy johnson's got a lead right now but those are two cars that look like they're coming to the front and they're doing it just like jimmy is in the center back to the start finish line thanks jeff matt kenseth Inside Jeff Gordon for fourth place now. You know, we always look at the trends, and what we're looking at is the last 10 spring Dover races. The average lap of the last caution, about 338. So you figure we're, we're getting close to that area right now. We normally don't have that late race caution. Evidently, they got Ryan Newman's transmission back to where it would shift gears as he's out there in front of Jimmy Johnson right now on the racetrack, but 14 laps down. Also, Michael Annette uh, broke a shock mount. They replaced that and got him back out in the race. Uh, 20 laps in arrears. And, and Mike, another thing in the spring Dover races, we have never had a green-white checkered finish either. Hey, guys, I wonder if Jimmy Johnson's maybe pacing it a little bit right now, maybe taking care of those tires. A couple laps, he ran up the 2450s. That time he was down to a 30, but it, uh, it might make sense to make sure uh, you got enough tire and stuff to get to the checkered flag. What do you think, guys? Yeah, you might be right, Michael. It might be saving a little fuel, might be saving a little tires. I, and I'll tell you why. I, I don't want to keep harping on Brad Keselowski, but if there was a caution and Keselowski could make up that gap between him and Jimmy Johnson, Brad Keselowski has a very, very fast race car. Matt, how about our leader? And Mike, concerning fuel, a few moments ago, Chad Canals told Jimmy Johnson, at this point, our calculations show you can go at full speed to lap 400. Yeah, that was the advantage of getting, you know, at the pitting with the 80 lap or 78 laps to go. That gave him a little bit of cushion. Kurt Busch is on pit road. This would be a scheduled stop. Remember, he had to make an unscheduled stop for a loose wheel. So this would be his final stop of the day. Yeah, and I know, Daryl, you keep talking about Brad Keselowski. He ran 79 laps on that last run. If he wants to try to make it to the end, he's going to have to run 80 laps, and that would be 80 green flag laps. That's the number I kill. That's a, what I've asked the number. Asked, what's the max? Absolute max. Best you can do, 80 laps. I've heard that over and over again. seen Brad Keselowski with all kinds of fuel saving measures oh, yeah. under caution under green whatever it takes I saw him at Kansas kicking the car out of gear and, and turning the engine off going into the corner under green under green I mean he was racing and doing it and his lap times were not that bad and look at this you can watch with his telemetry here he's saving fuel look at that yep. look at him kicked it out of gear and the thing about wow. it, guys, it's not like he's way off the pace as far as lap times. No, that's what he can do that amazes me. I mean, you kick it out of gear, you push it, whatever you do, it doesn't affect his lap times hardly at all. He's thinking big picture here. So you see the tachometer and you see the change in that red needle when he <laughs> drops it out of gear. Don't try this on the drive home, folks. <laughs> Uh, 
Now let's show you our top five and when they were last on pit road, Tony Stewart is the most at risk, lap 317 of this group. Yeah, he was the one I would be the biggest concern because he would have to go 83 laps, and I keep saying 83 green laps. The reason I say green laps, you can save a lot more fuel under caution laps. Uh, Larry, what does maybe Tony Stewart need more than anything, even a good finish? A win. Amen. A good finish does him no good. No good at all. But we don't see Tony Stewart saving fuel, which almost tells me that he and Chad Johnston, his crew chief, they know they're going to have to make a pit stop. And I, did, I don't know. I'm, I've been watching this for a long time. I've never seen anybody be able to do what Brad does and, and get away with it. Yeah, I mean, if we tried to do that, we, I see, if normal people try to do that in the middle of a corner, you pop that clutch out, get that car back in gear, that car is going to slew sideways, and you got a good chance of losing it. Yeah, I've had them. I've had them jump out of gear going off in the corner, and I near wrecked yep. because I, I, you know, I didn't know I couldn't hang on to the car. Now I was wearing my calculator out last night, looking at trends. I always talk about the spring Dover races that we've been doing on NASCAR on Fox, and the average longest green flag run is right around 114 laps. Only twice was it less than 100 laps. So. The trend says that we can get that long green flag run. Right now, 102 laps, so just 12 laps shy of our average longest green run. So Brad Keselowski looks like he's no longer in fuel saving mode. You know why? Because he accomplished what he needed to. He now feels like he's got enough reserve that uh, he doesn't need to do that, but he can if he has to. So now his task is to try and run down Jimmy Johnson for the lead. And as we've seen today, that will <laughs> not be easy. No, their lap times are almost identical. They swap back and forth. One will be better one lap, one the next. But uh, that two car is the only car really that can keep pace with the, 20, with the, uh, with the 48. Dale Earnhardt Jr. chasing Clint Boyer. They are sixth and seventh. Every driver in front of these two has won the Sprint Cup championship at least once. Well, Dale Jr. and Boyer, I know we're watching out of Dale Jr.'s car here. They've been going back and forth. I mean, for the ever since we went back to green. Jr. had a run on him on the Boyer a couple of times, but Boyer cut closed the door, and they've been riding right there for a lot of laps now. Now, Martin Trex Jr. in that 78 car got his first career win here at Dover back in 2007. He's cracked the top 10, but he's a little bit in the same boat as Tony Stewart. He was one of the first drivers to hit pit road during those clean track stops at lap 315, so he was able to really take advantage of fresh tires a lot, but we know that 78 car will have to make one more stop. Yeah, I talked to those guys this morning. They said, you know, we think we finally got the package that Martin likes. We think we're finally turning the corner. It's just taking us longer than we thought. Yeah, they were there at Charlotte. Maybe a top five finish with nine laps to go. The rear drive plate and rear axle, the spine stripped out. Yeah, just the difference in the setup of the car, the difference between Kurt Busch and Martin Truex Jr., it's just thrown those guys a loop, and they finally are about to get their arms around it. But because he stopped five or more laps before the rest of the drivers in the top ten, other than Tony Stewart, going to have to make one more. And his lap times are still great. I mean, he's running 24-29. That's about a lot. what a lot of the drivers in the top five or top ten is running right now. You can see that Brad Keselowski is closing on Jimmy Johnson. Closing in a hurry, too. 44 laps to go. Johnson has just been so dominant, and I've been, I've been saying, is there anybody got a shot? Anybody got a chance at running with this guy? And uh, you know, I've been watching Brad, and I'm telling, even though he saved fuel, his lap times were still great, and he is on the gas. I don't know how you be on the gas and saving gas, but he can do it. 43 laps to go. Let's check in with Chris and Michael in the Hollywood Hotel. Yeah, and Mike, we were, of course, watching Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski and uh, listening to the conversation about the lap times of Jimmy and fuel consumption. Yeah, you know, Jimmy, a, a great driver like Jimmy Johnson might vary a tenth or so, half a tenth a lap. He ran a 25 flat one lap and a 24 flat the next. That means he is definitely conserving his fuel and his car for the end. Brad Keselowski can run down about the same lap time as Jimmy. Seems like when Jimmy saw Brad was coming, 
he picked the pace back up. This is an interesting race. That last time by 24.05, the fastest car on the track for Jimmy Johnson. How aware are Jimmy and Brad of the Tony Stewart or Matt Kenseth or each other's fuel situation? I think they're very well aware of what's around them. Brad with Jimmy and Jimmy with Brad. I don't think they're that worried about Tony Stewart because of the issue of him not having enough to get to the finish. But they've got to save something, Chris. If a guy can mount a charge late in the going those last 10 laps of the race, that can make a big difference. And Mike, uh, for Jimmy Johnson, worst position, 12th today. He's led six different times and in the driver's seat with 41 to go. And he's turned it up, Chris. His last lap was quicker than Brad Keselowski's by almost three tenths of a second. Again, and two tenths this now time. Back, Carson's out. Carson's Caution. Out. Out well, this changes everything. I can't believe it. Well, there's a lot of guys that are going to make this as big for a bunch of guys, I think. Seventh yellow flag of the day it comes here at lap 361. Debris in the back straightaway. Little, probably 35 lap shootout here, four fresh tires. And I think Jamie McMurray will again be the beneficiary of the free pass. And Daryl, I totally agree with what you said. We've got roughly 37 to 40 laps on these tires. We only have right now 13, will be 14 drivers on the lead lap. I think you have to get four tires. Well, I know Tony Stewart won it last <laughs> year, but there were only 19 laps to go. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine not getting four tires. So Jamie Mack back on the lead lap. I saw cars get four tires, cars that weren't that good. They get four tires and go through the field. Yes, sir. Get four tires and get ready for about a 35 lap shootout to decide the FedEx 400 benefiting autism speaks. So short pitting for Tony Stewart really worked out. This caution really benefited him. It really did. Right, because he will enter pit road from third position and here come the leaders, Matt. Jimmy Johnson won last fall, looking for four tires on the 48. He said his car started out snug, and it didn't get any better on his Chevrolet. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart, who won here last spring, that caution saves them. They could not make it on fuel. Now they're on the same cycle as everyone. Krista? Matt Kenseth, they were confident they could make it, but they want to go ahead and get those tires. He said he's a little bit free off right now. Meanwhile, Brad Kozlowski, they make the call for four tires on this stop. Brad, very good. And the, the crew now needs to do their job. Dale Jr. got hit coming into his pit by Denny Hamlin. So his car was all askew, but they complete the four tire change because the car ended up legally in the pit box. Two tires on the last stop won both races at Dover last year. You didn't have 30-something laps on your tires with 30-something to go and everybody else on four fresh tires. I don't feel good about that call. But for Brian Patty and his driver, Clint Boyer, was it the only chance they had to win? I'll ask you the same question Darrell asked me. What does Clint <laughs> Boyer need? The same thing that Tony Stewart needs to win. A win. Boy, we saw Chad heading somewhere in a hurry. And then we saw where? We'll take a break, too. And we'll be right back to Come finish back. this it's race. It's going to get good. With NASCAR on Fox. Clint Boyer's Toyota with just a two-tire change on that pit stop is our leader from Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, Tony Stewart, and Brad Keselowski. Today is the final race of this season on NASCAR on Fox, but you can keep up with the entire sport every weekday as NASCAR Race Hub brings you the best coverage, biggest names, and the most access. It's the daily show of record for NASCAR Nation, and you can catch it weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. We will restart with 16 cars on the lead lap. Marcus Ambrose and Carl Edwards are going to take the wave around and gamble that their fuel will go the distance. Mm. A lot of gambling going on right now. A number of lap down cars also are taking the wave around. Looks like a dozen or so. Let's do a pit stop comparison between Jimmy Johnson's crew, Brad Keselowski, and Clint Boyer's crew. Now we know one difference will be that Clint Boyer changed his two tires. You can see six seconds.
But right there, that's the big difference. But the big difference is Jimmy Johnson's going to be right behind Clint Boyer. But because of a 14-second stop, a second and a half off, Keselowski goes pretty much from second to fifth. Yeah, he had a, they had a real slow stop. I was watching them. They didn't get him out quite as quick as some of the other guys. Jimmy Johnson is trying to win back-to-back -back races for the 13th time in his career. Clint Boyer is trying to win a race to make it onto the chase grid and race for NASCAR's year-end championship, the Sprint Cup. Got this time in the race last year when Jimmy had a restart that didn't go his way. Cost him a win here, and he hadn't forgotten it. One of the things he and I talked about yesterday. Fans on their feet. It'll be 34 laps to go. Boyer gets a jump, and we're back under green. Kozlowski to the bottom, three wide. Boy, he packed it in there, Kozlowski did, but uh, Matt Kenseth gave him no room. And Joey Logano got no room coming off the corner from Jeff Gordon. I'll tell you who's on a mission right now, Tony Stewart in that 14 car. He is up on that wheel. Fourth place for Stewart. He comes to the high side. Trailing Kenseth and Kozlowski goes to the bottom once again, this time on Stewart. Oh, Hamlin, easy, buddy. Hamlin underneath. Tony coming off two over there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just got together with Eric Almirola oh. and Paul Menard. Paul Menard just gave Jr. a shot. A whole lot of pushing and shoving going on back in here. Time to go somewhere. Well, it's go time, Daryl. Most cars you can pass is on one of these restarts. Catch them where they're not getting a drive off the corner or not getting a dive in. Brad Keselowski, that two, he just drove by Clint Boyer in that 15. Keselowski's up to third, Boyer's in fourth now. Bunch of guys really look good after that uh, pit stop, Larry, the 78 car of True Edge. He just went by Jeff Gordon into eighth place. A lot of passing going on back behind these leaders. Boy, the handling has really went away, which it was reported his car would not turn Jeff Gordon's 20. Yeah, you can car. just see him there. He's just sliding up the hill off of both corners, and the car just will not stay on the bottom like it did earlier in the day. Kyle Larson goes past to take over the ninth spot, and here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. for 10. Now Jeff Gordon in that 24 in a maroon car, he's just hanging on right now. Thirty laps to go. Eric Almirola draws a bead on the 24 Chevrolet. And right behind comes Kevin Harvick, one lap down still. After an unscheduled stop, Harvick is going to need one more caution to get back on the lead lap and have a chance to contend. Uh, he led 24 laps earlier in the day. No, they right, did. Right now, he's the first driver one lap down. They've done a nice job of getting themselves in a position to get back on the lead lap, but it has taken them the, all day, and they're going to need another caution. The Gibbs Toyota second and sixth. Kenseth and Hamlin. Kyle Busch led most of the first 81 laps, but Clint Boyer got together with Busch, with Kyle ending up in the wall and out of the race early. Tell you what, pretty impressed with Boyer and Larry. After uh, everybody kind of fanned around him and got him out of shape there a little bit, he settled down. And right now he's running in the top, in the fourth position and holding his own pretty good now over Tony Stewart. And Daryl, he was running six when that caution came out. I think maybe Brian Patty and Clint Boyer knew that was not going to be a race winning move, but maybe get track position and buy you a better finishing spot than where you were running. Yeah, it was well worth the gamble. There's no question about that. Kevin Harvick passes Jeff Gordon, not for position, as Harvick is 17th, one lap down. Everybody's just kind of minding their manners right now. There's a little bit of racing going on back here. The Casey Kane and Paul Menard are kind of going at each other pretty hot and heavy here. They're going to. Casey's had a run on Paul a couple of times, but wasn't able, to, wasn't able to get by. Advancing the Loudon race earlier this week, Casey Kane spent a day as a Concord, New Hampshire firefighter, uh, developing a great respect for our nation's first responders. They put him through the mill, and he enjoyed it. And the guy that ran over the concrete right in the back of that picture right there, Jamie McMurray, 
What a, you got to give that team a, a shout out, buddy, because they did a great job repairing that car. He got it down the lap, he got it back, and uh, here he is running in the hello, 14th, 14th spot. Position. Yeah, I think which where the type of car he had, I think that's a very artificial where he's running. I, he had really maybe a top five, top ten car. Sure appeared that way at the time. Jimmy Johnson on cruise control running 23.50s and 60s for his lap times, but he's 1.6 out in front of Matt Kenseth as the two drivers that battled for last year's Sprint Cup run 1-2. And a great job by NASCAR and Dover International Speedway when a piece of concrete at an expansion joint came apart, damaging McMurray's car and others. Very quick work to uh, get that filled and sealed, and the patch has held very well. Yeah, that's a nice job. But that took a lot of preparation and planning to have the right tools in place, people who knew how to use it, and, and make it happen. Well done. Jimmy Johnson across the line. Here's your sprint 20 to go. Johnson has dominated today, leading 252 laps so far. Only five of the last 13 Dover races was won by the halfway leader, and in each case, it was Jimmy Johnson. 1.4 seconds back, Matt Kenseth, Brad Keselowski, Clint Boyer, and Tony Stewart, who's had quite a charge today from 20th spot. Up into the top five, he's currently five seconds back. That's your sprint 20 to go in Dover. Think about back to Bristol with uh, Tony Stewart. Remember, he had a great day there to finish the top five. We said, well, that pretty much puts the leg story to rest. If you can run 500 laps to Bristol today, another great gutsy performance. Nice job by Tony Stewart. But I just think about our driver running in second right now, Matt Kenseth in that 20 car. Looking out his windshield, seeing this 48 car of Jimmy Johnson, Matt ha has really had an unbelievable season. Top five finish at Charlotte. He's been leading some laps. They've been a little bit off when the season started. Still looking for his first win of 2014. And we're halfway through the race to the chase when this race is over. Yeah, they made some nice changes on that car late in practice yesterday. And we noticed his lap times really uh, picked up. And it's, it's paid off for him. They started 19th. Right now, he's going to have his hands full here with holding off Fred Keselowski because Brad is closing on him quick. That's the battle shaping up for second and for fifth. You see Tony Stewart ahead as you ride with Denny Hamlin in our FedEx cam. That's the battle for fifth. And as Stewart catches traffic, Hamlin is going to be right there. Tell you one thing about this this racetrack and this concrete racetrack once you get it figured out like chad canals and jimmy johnson have the track never changes things around you might the rule package car or whatever but the track never changes that constant once you get a package that works here you can repeat it over and over again you know guys coming into 2014 one of our big stories was our rookie class and i know we were talking a lot about austin Dillon and rightly so bringing a three back but this young man in that 42 car kyle larson what a pleasant surprise he is he has been this year because if he can close out this top ten that'll be two top fives and six top tens and he's flirting getting inside the top ten in points could he be the driver that maybe gets in on points in the chase but i'm not going to rule out that he won't win a race this year i still think he's got a mighty good shot i said that in the pre-race show larry and uh, everybody was questioning chip ganassi putting him in this 42 car oh he's not ready he's a rookie he doesn't have enough experience they knew what they were doing Nice place, Darrell. 78-88. Now, this has been going on for about three laps as Dale Earnhardt Jr. tries to fight his way past Martin Truex. Two old buddies here racing each other pretty hard here with uh, 12 laps to go. But this indeed would be Martin Truex Jr.'s best finish of 2014. He only has one other top 10 finish, 10th at Richmond earlier this year. But like you said, Larry, they had a great car at Charlotte last week, had some issues late in the race. 
but today they're backing it up, and I believe they have turned the corner with the, the setup in the car. Denny Hamlin caught Tony Stewart. Tries to move his 11 up into the top five. Tony Stewart, that 14, talked about racing hard at the top of the day. I promise you, he's going to race that 11 hard for any position. Levin's getting up off the corner a little bit better than Tony. Tony's got a little more straightaway speed, it appears, able to hold him off. Ten to go. And Johnson holds a two-second lead. Casey Mears has fallen a bit off pace. He's kind of wobbling around like, yeah. the, like he's got a flat tire, possibly a tire going down. And Car still, this battle rages on for fifth. Now Mears is all but all but stopped in turn and two. He just about spun that thing out. Uh oh, that's a tire come apart. Yeah, it? I think that's coming off the 13 car. Yeah, right rear. And he's, and he's on pit road. We stay green with nine to go. And a little bit of rubber from apparently from Casey Mears' car down low in the back straightaway. Got Second a, closing. Got a battle here, buddy. Wow. Brad Keselowski's Whoa. board. And up the hill goes Matt yep. Kenseth. And away goes Keselowski caution, caution, as caution. the caution waves. Caution, debris, debris, debris. Hello. <laughs> this is going to be good. And we saw Mir slow down the back. He yeah. come down the front straight, and there's what's left of the right rear tire. That tire just came unwound. Yeah, it just shredded. A little shredded heat there. He saved it down in the middle of one and two, and then he picked up speed, and I think that's when the thing came unraveled. So lap 392 is the eighth caution flag of the day. This is when these guys right here, that they absolutely earn their money, these crew chiefs, because we've got 26 laps on our tires, and we essentially have 15 to 16 drivers on the lead lap. We're probably only going to have about three to five laps of racing. If you're running in the top five, you have no choice. There's no strategy. You stay out. But I do think if you're at the back half of these lead lap cars, drivers, you're going to be coming to pit road and get some tires and see if you can make something happen. I'd have to be at the way back. I don't, I don't think you can give up many spots here. 15 lead lap cars. Shall I stay or shall I go? Boy, Keselowski. Brad Keselowski <laughs> fakes it, doesn't take it. But here comes Hamlin, Logano. Earnhardt, Almarola, yeah. Larson, and everybody behind them. Yeah. Pretty much from sixth place back, to my point. Top five, you stay out. From sixth place back, you pit. Steve? And Denny Hamlet says, I need to be freed up, Mike. We expect them to take just two tires on the 11 car. There he is. He stops on pit road. Krista. Joey Logano came in. They planned to make a four-tire change. They called the audible. They said, no, two tires, two-tire change for Joey, but it's not a fast one. So Hamlin will lead them out, then Logano and Earnhardt. Yes, it's only two tires, but I think this could be a winning move. If you can start up in the front three rows, okay, fourth row maybe? Yeah, not. I don't believe there's enough laps. That's going to be the key, Mike. Okay. We're only going to have three to five laps of race. Yeah, we don't have enough laps, and you got, to, I mean, you got three cars of the 48 cars we know how good he is he, he can run pretty good on old tires and the two and the 20 i think those three cars are going to be pretty hard to pass even if you did get two the first seven cars stayed out saturday full day of mlb action beginning with the indians taking on the rangers on fox sports one then you'll see baseball night in america on fox either red sox tigers yankees royals or a's orioles at 7 Eastern Time on Fox. It's also streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now to find Fox Sports 1 to catch that Indians Rangers game, go to foxsports1.com to find Fox Sports 1 on your provider. Six laps to go, five when they come around to get the one to go, so we'll race four laps to the finish in Dover, Delaware with Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth. You know, Keselowski had just gotten by the 20 car of uh, Matt Kenson when that caution came out. Apparently, he was not by him when he went by the, the uh, last timing line. 
which I think may work out to Brad's advantage because he gets to start on the inside behind Jimmy Johnson. He's definitely the one I'm going to be watching on this restart. You saw what he did last time. He tried to take her three wide down into turn one, and that was for uh, second or third. Yeah. This, is, this is for the win. Well, the car I'm going to watch is that baby blue number 11 of Denny Hamlin because he is the first car in the restart order with at least two fresh tires. Two tires, four laps, will it be enough? He's going to have to restart on the outside of the fourth row. Yeah, well, what's got to be careful of here is uh, we talk about the, the two car of Brad Keselowski. He doesn't want to dive bomb down under Jimmy Johnson, get into him and get him loose. That could be disastrous. But wait a minute. Remember the restart just a couple of starts ago where Brad dove to the bottom oh, yeah. and took him three wide into turn one. He'll try it. I know. I know. He, I'm just saying he, he better be careful or the 20 car will end up winning this race. We've seen that kind of scenario before, too. I, I, I see it in my mind right now. <laughs> that little voice. Jimmy Johnson on the inside. Matt Kenseth on the outside. And Johnson gets the start. Keselowski on the inside. It's Kenseth. And Boyer drops to the bottom. Yeah, Kenseth did not get a good restart whatsoever. Here comes that two car. He's got a nice run up off of turn two over there. Hamlin seventh with fresh tires going for sixth. Keselowski looking for the lead. That's Hamlin on the high side taking Tony Stewart. But the strength of Jimmy Johnson all day long. Exit of the corner and it showed up right there on turn And four. his restart. So he has nailed every restart. He's put a little gap on whomever was around him almost every restart. And here he's just pulling away slightly and just a little bit every, every corner. Hamlin to the inside on Truex. This will be for fifth place. For... But Mike, your point, he, he's, he's getting pay dirt for those two right side tires, just not enough laps. Johnson the leader, Keselowski second, Kenseth Boyer and Hamlin. The top five. Two to go. Pretty much stable right here, right now. White flag for Jimmy Johnson. Single filing it down the back straightaway. One battle toward the back. Marcus Ambrose, Jeff Gordon for 15. Out of turn four, Jimmy Johnson, the low Chevrolet, scores its 68th Sprint Cup win in the FedEx 400. Yeah, Roy Clark. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, team. Awesome day. Boy, I told you you were going to like that race car, didn't I? I told you last week. Yeah, man, what a ride. Thank you. Yeah, man, thank you, Jimmy. Fantastic job, guys. Everybody, great job. Way to perform from the time that we unloaded. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Jimmy Johnson is batting 360. As far as going to victory lane at Dover, this is his ninth win here. All but unbeatable. Two weeks ago, we were asking, when in the world are they going to win a race? He now joins Kevin Harvick and Joy Logano as drivers we know will be in the chase for the championship. And how would you like to be the competition? They thought they had them down. Boy, these guys are struggling. Last two weeks, now you're standing there. You've thrown everything you got at them, and they come out on top. Third straight victory for Rick Hendrick Chevrolet's. And this is the 13th time in his career that Jimmy Johnson has won back-to-back -back races. In the media center last Sunday night when he went in there, he said, so what are y'all going to talk about now? Well, you know what they're going to talk about? Winning two races in a row. And going to one of his favorite tracks. Another one Another of their one. favorite tracks. Pretty good there, too, at Pocono. Where he is the defending hey, winner on, of next week's race. Tell you what, if that was my race car and it drove and run like that thing did, I would, I'd be real, real careful with it. Now, this discussion between Matt Kenseth and Clint Boyer is about that last restart. And here's why. Yeah, you see right here, Matt didn't get going quite good enough, and uh, Clint wanted to give him a little help, maybe a little bit more than what Jimmy was expect or what uh, Matt was expecting. Got Matt up the hill, got him loose, and that allowed... Uh, it almost caused a big crash. Watch this. Bam. Matt fought back hard. Yep. And finished just ahead 
or just ahead of Boyer in third. Kind of feeling Boyer might have said, okay, buddy, uh, you know, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to hit you that hard. Give a good call to Martin Trex Jr. in that 718. Their best finish of 2014 finished sixth. And an attaboy to Brett Moffat, the rookie, finished 22nd in his first ever Sprint Cup appearance. We're going to Sunoco Victory Lane with Jimmy Johnson at Dover yet again. Jimmy Johnson celebrating. He's the only NASCAR driver to be in the chase all 10 seasons. We are exactly halfway to NASCAR's playoff, and with two wins, count them in. Going for his seventh Sprint Cup championship, and we welcome you live to Dover, Delaware, and the Sprint Post Race Show, where Jimmy Johnson dominated, led seven different times, as importantly, five different restarts. He was in front and had to fight off the challengers to get there to celebrate back-to-back -back victories. Steve Burns is down there for the celebration for Jimmy and Team 48. Well, not only back-to-back -back wins Chris Myers, the ninth victory for Jimmy Johnson here at Dover. That sounds silly just saying it. <laughs> it is incredible. These tall boy beer cans are awesome in victory lane here, but uh, so much to be thankful for. I uh, wish Mr. Hendrick was here, boss, and there at home watching. Um, just so thankful for an awesome race team, an awesome car. Great support. Uh, my family, this sweet little girl right here. There's, uh, there's Evie, and we got Lydia to victory lane, which is great. But I uh, just so much to be thankful for. I'm sorry, honey. Did I get you what? I got her what? <laughs> Look at Mr. Burns. He's really what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, just so thankful for the support we get from Lowe's and Cobalt Tools. And I'm just happy to get the job done today. And I heard you, Chad, say as the checkered flag flew that you knew you were going to have a good race car here. Why did you know that? Well, you know, we've, we've been getting closer, and then uh, we've got a new generation car that Chad just had a lot of faith in and put a lot of time and effort into. And he told me I'd love the car, and sure enough, you know, we unloaded and got on the track, and it was, it was right. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's go to Krista. They made changes to their pit crew after trouble last week. On that last pit stop, it wasn't the best your team had had, but you also had a tight race car. What was the difference? Uh, you know, we just had an up and down day, Krista. Uh, you know, I think the early part of the race, we weren't where we wanted to be with Miller Lite Ford Fusion. And uh, Paul Wolf, the, the whole two crew, made a lot of adjustments. And by about halfway, the car just woke up. And uh, I think you saw we were able to drive from like 13th to 2nd uh, at one point. And I thought we were pretty equal to Jimmy at that time. And, uh, you know, we just kind of ran out of laps to, to get a, a shot at him. I feel like if I would have got a crack at him at the front row, I could have gave him a run for his money. But... Just kind of ran out of laps there at the end and uh, proud of my guys for working real hard and adjusting on it and, and getting us uh, back up to the front. And it was fun to watch. A great day for Brad Kozlowski. Thanks, Brad and Krista. Let's go back in this race where Jamie McMurray, who won the All-Star race, looking for his first win of the year lap, 158, right there, concrete on the Monster Mile, creating problems. He was running 16th at the time at the exit of turn two, created problems for the driver of the one car. Jeff Hammond caught up with McMurray. Well, Jamie McMurray, what happened over off of turn two, and, and what did you think happened? Well, I'm not 100% sure. I, I guess that the racetrack came up, and when I came off of the corner, um, I just had, I mean, it just felt like I, I hit something, obviously, um, heavy, and initially I thought I'd blown a tire out uh, because I, when I hit it, it actually pushed the car to the right, and I got into the fence a little bit, and as I slowed down, I, I couldn't figure out first off why I didn't hit the fence harder. And then what happened? Um, I, I mean, I didn't see anything. It just, uh, you know, hit the front end, ripped the splitter off, um, and it pushed the car to the right. Uh, so I'm not real sure. Great recovery. Yeah, thank you. And we'll have more on the aftermath of the 13th race of the season. Jimmy Johnson leading 272 laps and in victory lane.